Hi, welcome back guys. This is your sensei, back with another fanfiction. This is the first part of, what if Naruto fell in love with which. Now before starting, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Now let's get into the fanfic. Rani heard the dragon wail. Indeed, the beast Bella woke the witch with a start. She felt its battle cry rattle her body as it ripped her forth from her dream. A mighty roar rent the very air and tore the mist asunder, an awful sound that soon found itself answered in kind as something snarled back. The very foundations of her abode quaked underfoot as it clashed with said something, then came a strange noise, almost as if something were being cracked, shattered, splintered. One last tremor and it was done. The world fell silent, sure as the shattering once more. Her open eye blinked, narrowing now in mild consternation. What madness is this? A glimmer of curiosity stirred in Rani's soul as she pondered the matter yet further. Had she not cast aside her flesh long ago, had she possessed a proper body within her veins, she might have felt her heart skip a beat just now in confusion. As it were, she experienced only a fleeting sense of wonder and read. Someone had slain Agila, troublesome glintstone dragon though she was. No mere tarnish could hope to topple that creature and out alone, perhaps not even in a group. It was clever even among its kin, incredibly powerful in its own right, able to fell even giants with ease. And yet by the sudden silence that followed, it had surely been defeated, if not slain outright by an intruder. Who then, possessed the strength for such a feat had the two fingers sent another assassin for her head another baleful shadow to end her life when she least expected it. Nay, she would not falter here, not when she was so close. Her intrigue thusly roused, Rani rose from her sturdy chair, hopped off the great many books she'd placed there, and paced to the window. So was she granted sight. There in the fog betwixt her land and the tower she saw it, a great glowing golden on black beast planting a paw upon the fallen dragon's spine. No, not a beast. Fox. The name sprung to her mind. It was a fox. The true size of this monstrosity and likewise its master's identity lay hidden in the murk, but she could see that it stood large indeed, larger even than the dragon itself easily big enough to pin her guardian as one might some unruly child. As she looked on aghast, those giant jaws snapped down at the guardian beast's prone form. There was no. Rather than take the dragon's head and end its life as was its right the giant fox roared at its captive. Before her very eyes, the dragon's body sagged beneath its snarl, head dipping in defeat. Or was it submission Rani found herself reminded of something she once seen in more peaceful times, an era before she'd cast aside the cruel certainty of her flesh for the unknown. She'd seen two hounds fight once in the yard. One had been larger than the other, and yet that same one had let its victim live. Strange. What use was mercy in this world? As she looked on the fox let the noble beast up. Rani knew what would transpire. Such was nature. True to its very own, the dragon took full advantage. Wicked breath blasted the fox in the face. It recoiled with a pained snarl, then surged forward, barreling through the fire in the flames. Powerful jaws clamped down on the beast's throat as it wrestled the glintstone dragon down once more. It showed no mercy and for the perhaps first time in forever, Rani's nerve failed her. She closed her eye and looked away. An awful crunch filled the air. She heard the dull thud as its corpse struck the ground, felt it rattle her tower once more. When she looked back, there its broken body lay, plain as day. With neither word nor warning that golden fox shrank down to assume the likeness of an equally golden human. Body burning brighter than the earth tree itself, they seemed to set the very mists ablaze. She couldn't see his face from here, nor read his lips, but she saw the respect he gave the dragon. They touched a hand to its flank and the beast's body dissolved into runes. The amount was not insubstantial. He'd been strong enough already that would only add to their strength. Pivoting, they made for the door with purpose. Their golden form strode toward the entrance, ripped aside the seal to her tower, and began the ascent. Just like a tale from the old stories mother read to her as a child, a knight slaying the dragon to rescue the princess fair. But she was no maiden to be rescued. Hadjala had been tasked with guarding her rise from unwanted guests, and while her death did not pain her as much as some, it was still an embarrassment to see one so mighty laid so low, so quickly. Who the devil was this man, and what did he want? She scurried back to her seat and made herself presentable while surreptitiously readying her sorcery. If he has come for her life, he will not find her unprepared. Perhaps if she remained perfectly still, he would not take notice. Her current body was that of a doll, after all. She had no signs of life within her save her soul, and that was not something one could so easily sense. And if her wood assailant thought her a mere puppet, a harmless doll to be ignored, all the better. He would lower his guard. Be vulnerable. There she heard footsteps. Hello, a low voice called. Anyone here sorry about the dragon didn't really have a choice. A young man clad in faded rags stalked up the steps, wearing a tattered cloak with hood furled. His face she could not see no weight. She told a lie, she could see the lower half of it. Whiskered cheeks dimpled in a stern yet determined expression, but the shadows of the gloom hid the rest. Rani felt her mouth go dry. She sensed the power from him. And yet she mustn't move, to do so would give her away. No tarnished, this. He had no blessing of grace about him, but there was strength in his spirit all the same. His eyes passed over her still form, taken in by the ruse. Excellent. He thought her no more than some puppet, with luck he'd just turn right around and let her be. A ringed black staff tapped the tiles. A mage then she'd not seen one capable of conjuring a giant beast like that. There was something got about him. 
a staid boldness that rather reminded her of Loyal Blade, yet this went well beyond it. He walked right up to her without a care in the world and sat down actually crossed his legs and dared to sprawl out before her, the lout without so much as a care in the world. He fed up his hood, exposing sunny blonde hair and blue eyes framed by whiskered cheeks, cheeks even now dimpling in a sunny smile. That's a pretty neat trick. His voice nearly made her jump. Would have worked on anyone else. You can stop pretending now. Curses, she'd been foiled. Nothing to be gained by playing dead any longer. I know not what thy mean, but I bid thee welcome nonetheless. Ranny raised her head to glare at him beneath the brim of her hat. She spoke slowly, the lie coming easily to her. Thou must have some business in mind to come all this way though I have no memory of inking thee an invitation. What brings thee here her spell was nearly ready now, his next response would determine his fate. Life or death, have thou come to seek my life, as you did mine dragon. Oddly enough, those were the words to make him flush, indeed, he looked away to scratch at a whiskered cheek. Well, it's a bit of a long story. A tale to tell, then good. She could attempt to formulate a plan while he told her his story of woe. No doubt it would be little different from the tales of other tarnished she'd entertained before. No, she cared not a jot for what he thought. If he'd come here for her, his desires would be requited not. I kind of fell out of the sky. A pause now, as he considered his words. Probably out of my world too, because I'm pretty damn sure we don't have dragons or monsters where I'm from. I beg your pardon. Randy's every thought ground to a halt. Her composure, once smooth as the sky and serene as the stars found itself summarily ruffled. Another world she'd heard tell of lands beyond the fog, many had, but to speak of a different world, another realm entirely curious. Was it a world free of the two fingers and the greater will one could but hope? Yeah, he muttered, looking strangely put out to that effect. Seems to be happening to me a lot, lately. Reluctantly, Rani released her gathered mana and steepled her four hands in her lap. Such a curious soul. I would have your name, stranger. Naruto. The young man gave it readily, still leaning upon his staff. Sorry for dropping in like this. On a whim, she told him the truth. I am the witch, Rani. A pleasure to meet thee. A blonde brow rose. Don't look much like a witch to me. Well, didn't he have a silver tongue? Why ever not? Witches ain't pretty. Bold, this one. This world of yours. She tilted her head just so, regarding him with her good eye. Perhaps you would care to tell me of it. Naruto was more than happy to do so. That faintest of smiles touched her cold lips as the man told his tale. This exchange of words meant nothing. Not a thing. Nay, not a jot. She was merely indulging her curiosity. Nothing more. Ah, how little Rani knew. So you're the fellow that fell out the sky. Naruto creaked a bleary blue eye open where he lay. Guess that depends. On. Much to his amusement, a wolf's muzzle stared down at him, bound to a man's body. Honest and curious to a fault, Rani's sworn sword seemed inordinately pleased to finally meet him. The sentiment was shared. Not a week ago, such a sight would have scared the daylights out of him. Now he'd slain a dragon, caught the eye of a witch, met a gentle giant and a sleazy sorcerer alike. What was a half-wolf compared to all that madness? A sleepy yawn split the air of Rani's rise as Naruto stretched. You must be Blade. He rolled upright, bounced to his feet, offered a hand, then grinned when the larger warrior clasped it. Nice to finally meet you. Rani told me a bit about you. A wolfish grin was his reward, inasmuch as a man with the face of a wolf could smile. Only good things, I hope. Hey, mostly. They shared a laugh. Really, it was a miracle he hadn't met Blade until now, and only because he'd been on some far-flung mission to the Kaled Wilds. Nasty place. Rani had told him stories, both of that place and Blade himself. Her sworn shadow was like a half-brother to her, a decent sort like Eiji, albeit better with a blade and far more curious. So, the lupine warrior inquired, releasing his hand, you really fell from the clouds. He winced. Not by choice, I assure you. All a heavy hand clapped his back, blasting the air from his lungs. How'd you manage the landing? Poorly. Naruto took a deep breath and bit off an angry sigh. He knew Blade wasn't trying to bait him. Not like Seluvis. Needed to watch that one. He felt wrong. Nasty. Vile. Rani claimed he had his uses, but something seemed off about him. He just couldn't see what it was. But back to the present. Coughing a little, he straightened his back, winced at the bruise already forming between his shoulder blades, and dared a grin. So, how was you trip you find what you were looking for? Now it was the wolf's turn to look sheepish. How he managed it with a mug like that, he'd never know. Not really. He sighed. Couldn't find the Y entrance to knock on there. A blink. Knock what no. Nothing you need worry about yet. The wolven warrior replied with an easy laugh. Actually, I came by for Yao with a question. Naruto sensed the question coming long before it was spoken, Iji had hounded him with the same. Are you here to serve our lady? Hey, I wouldn't say serve, more like I feel I can't leave her alone. You know he walked to the balcony and sat down, looking out into the mist as he scratched his cheek. Feels like she needs help and I'm really not a fan of gods, you know. Blade sat beside him. Bad experience, I take it. Yes, he flung up his arm, frustration slipping its leash at last. Her name was Kaguya and she was such a pain to deal with her at least, I could beat. I'm good at fighting, you know wringing his fists, he turned his eye toward the distant mountain peaks. Not sure how I'm supposed to help here. I'll figure it out, I'm sure, I just need time. Then perhaps you'd appreciate a little diversion. Naruto blinked. He blinked hard. Wolfman say what now? I'm off to hunt down a traitor, you see. 
This time, there could be no denying the smug edge to the wolf's words. Was wondering if you'd care to join me. An idea dawned. He'd been so very bored these past few days. With Rani asleep her body required such for days at a time and little in the way of company beyond a bored Kurama, he'd found himself ranging further and further from the tower. Maybe a chance to stretch his legs was just what he needed. But first, tell you what. Naruto snapped his fingers. I'll go hunting with you if you help me with a little pet project of mine. Blade at his head like the loyal dog he was. And what might that be? I want to prank Rani. Silence reigned. Pardon, Rani. He spread his arms wide at his sides, warming to the words. I want to play a little joke on her while she's asleep. Try as he might, he couldn't quite keep the grin off his face. Help her lift her spirits, you know. Blade dithered, quite uncertain. She won't be hurt by this, will she? Hurt her he didn't think he could bear to do that, not in his wildest dreams. For all her brave front and facade, he could read her easily. When she wasn't sleeping, she just sat there. Alone. In her chair. Staring wistfully out the window. Her dreams weren't much better, they were dark, melancholy tings, even more miserable than her waking moments. No more. It ended today. Time to cheer the witch up. No. A wave of the hand was all it took to assure him. If anything, this'll cheer her up, might even make her smile more. It was almost cute, the way he perked up at that. It has been some time since I've heard Mistress Rani laugh. So Naruto rubbed his palms together. You game. The wolfman made noise that sounded vaguely like a chuckle. All right, he rumbled, leaning forward. I'll play. What did you have in mind? Movement woke her. Rani creaked an eye open, distantly aware of a shadow looming in her peripherals, of a blanket being deity about her slumbering form. She felt hands on her shoulders, heard voices whispering in hushed tones, their words muffled and indistinct. The hands gripped tighter now, and she felt something touch her face. Thread shivered in her soul. Close. Much too close. Much, much too close indeed. Panic reared its ugly head and her heart hitched, mana mustering in response as she prepared to fling her her assailant back with a spell. The fingers had found her at last. She had to fight, had to run weight. Dimly, she recognized the worn black and orange colors her so-called assailant wore, and her panic eased. Naruto she glimpsed Blade's mighty form looming near the stairs as well, and with it, and the last of her discord flashed past, shooting away like some stray shooting star across the night sky. He wouldn't let any harm come to her. Neither of them would. Bleary thoughts swept back to Naruto's ragged clothes. Really, she'd have to see about getting him some proper attire. Dark leather armor, perhaps. Yes, she fought to keep the little hitch from her voice as she woke. What is it? Naruto stepped back, waving a stick of charcoal before her face. Nothing. Just admiring our handiwork. Rani's good eye widened, then snapped to his fingers, noting the black smudges there. Realization dawned, and she took in several things at once. He was leaned over her body, arm half extended. A nine impish smile wreathed his whiskered visage, even as those beautiful blue eyes beamed at her. Beautiful ba. Her mind was still drowsy, it seemed. Warning, ready. He waved at her. Did you sleep well? Comprehension broke like the dawn. You did not. Me he laughed. I dunno. What didn't I do? You her brow furrowed. You did not take that charcoal to mine face. He only smiled at her, the scamp, much to her mounting dread. Rani stared him down, not willing to yield, yet aching to know all the same. What madness was this why had Blade played a part in it and why was he smiling? So had she been played for a fool she hadn't been caught out like this since she was but a child. Was this was this a prank she'd never fallen prey to such? How quaint. Unfortunately any amusement she might have felt was overshadowed by all this unyielding rage. I command you. Nope. Naruto shook his head. She hissed. You will tell me what you did. Nope. Answer me at once, lest I smite you where you stand. Nope. Third time's the charm, or so the saying goes. Finally the tableau broke and Rani reached up. Four fine hands flew to her face, patting it down exhaustively. Damn him. She'd been had. It would take forever to get all this gunk off her face, never mind the amount of time. They came away clean. Not a single smudge to them. Rani looked down at her palms, clean as ever. Back to him again. What sorcery is this you really didn't? Did you really think I'd be that mean Naruto leaned back, still grinning like the cat that caught the canary? I mean I thought about it, but still. Two fingers flitted forth, fing her forehead. Maybe don't take such a long nap next time, hey. A faint smile touched her pale face. Even pranked. Taken for a fool. Of course, she couldn't let such slide. She'd seldom suffered such fun as a child, even with her own brothers. How long had it been since she'd smiled Henso? She would make him pay for frightening her, of course. He would rue the day. Her brow furrowed. I will have recompense for this. Good. Naruto chirruped happily, as though expecting it. Then you won't mind going for a walk with me and Blade. Rani tilted her head, hiding beneath her hat. A walk. Whatever do you mean? Blade's smile was nothing but teeth. A very enthusiastic walk. When faced with such cheery grins, Rani's spirit couldn't help but falter. It had been an age since she'd left her rise to see the outside world. She dared not venture out into the lands between alone, not for long, but if she were to be shepherded by these two surely they could fend off any danger the fingers sent her way. I suppose I shall allow it. Naruto fell silent. And then, he lunged. Oh, you're still being it soon dear about this how adorable. Strong arms locked around her, drawing her into a crushing embrace. Rani's body lacked the ability to flush, but she burned with shame all the same. 
Unhand me at once, you oaf, she cried, wriggling in his arms. Forget I said anything, forget. He would not forget this moment, the baffling blonde. Then again, neither would Ranny. Was nice to talk a walk, Ranny considered. Granted, her current body wasn't best suited to travel, but the simple freedom of being out and about agreed with her. She could not feel the sun on her face, nor the wind in her hair. Neither smell the fading scent of summer, or even taste the crisp tang of an afternoon apple, but she needed not those things. She could still see the beauty of this world with her lone eye and appreciate it, broken though it was. So too could she heard the birds, chirping happily as they flitted to and fro. Listening to them brought back distant memories of her youth, of simple times, when she'd been blissfully unaware of her destiny. It was enough. She spoke but little on their journey through Lingrave. In truth, Naruto and Blade were all too happy to fill the silence for her. The former more than most. Ranny would never say it aloud, but still, it felt rather pleasant. To simply listen for once and not dictate the pace of conversation. It behooved her to learn more of him, this champion who would take up her cause. He was strong. Quite possibly the strongest in her employ. Not even Blade or Iji could wrestle down a dragon and break its neck. Yes, that was the reason she told herself. No other. She wasn't intrigued by him, nor the tales he told. Not in the least. Liar, liar. A little voice crooned in the back of her head. You're fond of him. He made you smile. Unbidden, Rani found herself touching a hand to her mouth as Naruto continued to chat with her. It had felt good to smile, even if her body was no longer of flesh. But it would not distract her from her duty. She must be firm. She must be resolute. Like the moon itself, eternal and unyielding. Nothing less would do. Nay, she muttered to herself. Tea is nothing. When the subject veered toward family, however, it was there that things began to go awry. Naruto had described his parents to her before, shortly after their first meeting. He had not, however, informed her of this. Your parents are dead. Yup. It was the casual way he said it, hands folded behind his head, that rankled her so, more than words ever could. It's fine. They gave their lives for me, and I got to talk to him for a bit afterwards, so I don't mind. There was pain there, an old ache buried so deep that only a witch such as she could notice it. Besides, I think they'd like you. A pause now, as he scratched his chin, never once faltering. Well, Mom probably would. A rueful grin tugged at the corner of his mouth as he skirted a fallen tree. Yeah, definitely. Ranny's brow shot up. Whatever for. Because you're feisty. Ranny's mind ran away with the words. For a wild moment she imagined a woman with wild red hair fussing over her, cooing at her petite features. No. Nay. Never. There was nothing she dreaded more. She'd faced down all manner of old monsters and madmen in the past, and yet somehow, the idea of meeting this boy's mother terrified her more than the two fingers ever had. Blade chuckled suddenly, a deep, throaty sound that snapped her back to reality. I think I'll scout ahead. Look after her while I'm away, won't you? Naruto snapped off a faux salute, grinning from ear to ear. Sure thing. I'll howl once I find the bastard, don't worry. Rani rounded on him, a protest prepared, but her shadow was already gone, slipping away into myriad mists that made up the Mistuad. Traitor leaving her alone with him this was a conspiracy blackest of treachery she would remember this indignity vengeance would be hers. Naruto offered her a half-hearted shrug and kept walking, forcing her to follow. She had to hasten her pace just to keep up. Blasted body. Does it not pain you having lived your life without them? A little. His shoulders went stiff for a moment, then eased. Maybe. But I've gotten over it. Another lie. How she loathed them. A hand snatched at his sleeve, bringing him up short. You should not speak of such things lightly. I'm not, really. His brow furrowed, and he squinted at her as a fox might some baffling bird. Really, Ranny, I'm fine this time his smile was genuine. Sure it hurts a little, but there's no point dwelling on the past and all. You've got family right you've never told me about him. She huffed, accepting the change of topic for what it was. Fine, fine. Be that way, would he? Ranny did not lie, rather, she couldn't, she was not capable of such in this form. I would not speak of it. All right. He shrugged. I understand. Ranny released his arm and muttered a half-hearted thanks under her breath. She'd cut ties with her family and the other demigods long ago, but at least they were alive for the most part. Of her, most remained. Radon had gone mad with rot, left to wander the Kaled wild. Rikard yet lived, but as an abomination in the volcano manner, twisted and cruel. And dear mother no, don't think about her. Renala had been a wonderful parent. She wished to remember her as such, not the broken shell she'd become after father's departure. Then there lay her extended family. She'd never much cared for that madman Moog, nor the bitter Morgoth, let alone the twin prodigies Miquela and Melania. Certainly not Queen Merica. Ah, but mother, mother, mother. She checked in on her from afar from time to time. Never in person, always via proxy. It pained her to see how she'd fallen in her absence. Renala had been a brilliant scholar and warrior queen both, a mistress of magic capable of winning the heart of Radig and himself until he cast her aside for that queen. And in leaving, he proved that mother was no champion at all. Confined to the academy in heartbreak, gone mad with despair, left to waste away in the library. Alone in dark seas, Rani cut her thoughts off with a hiss. They had to think her dead. T was the only way to save the world. If she could have done without killing Godwin, or Merica's subsequent act of lunacy, she would have. But there was no other way. In her heart of hearts she did not wish to see the world suffer, nor for the madness wrought by the shattering. Yet the fact remained. 
She had started this, thus it fell to her to end it, to fix it, to take this world away from them and the greater will, and in doing so, bring peace. What about you, though once more, Naruto's voice tugged free from her melancholy. Don't you miss it. Miss what Rani leaped on the lifeline, faltering a little when he led her away from a bear. Best avoid those. One strong blow would shatter this body. What dost thou mean? Naruto glanced at her askance. Having a proper body, she raised a fractured blue hand to frown at it. True, it was impeccable craftsmanship, but it was just that. Did she it had been so long now, since she cast aside her Empyrean flesh. An age since that awful night and the sacrifice she'd made. She could still remember the pain sometimes, still hear her own screams as her flesh burned away, the awful searing agony as her spirit was released. No doubt her scorched corpse still lay atop the tower, bearing that awful halibrand. Gone, discarded, what it had been for the bestatinate. Would you like one a body, I mean? Hope flowered in her heart. Ranny froze it before it could bloom. Elaborate. She pivoted to face him as they walked. I will not accept a form that leaves me beholden to the two fingers. She chose not to speak of her ring locked away in its, nor the fragment of her strength she'd left within. In an emergency, such would allow her to become flesh once she was free of their influence. But to tell him of it, nay, not yet, such was reserved for her consort, and she'd sworn never to take one. She wouldn't, she couldn't, she mustn't, to do so would ruin her. Well, old man Sage left me with a gift. Naruto spread his hands wide, startling her a little. A tiny scarlet flame furred in one palm, matching its sapphire twin in the other. He called it creation of all things. Might take some doing, but I can craft you one if push comes to shove. When she couldn't bring herself to answer, he bowled on like the boy he was. You'd be just like you are now, but actual flesh. Stronger, too. His brow furrowed a little at the thought. I'm not very good at it, so you'd have to well, guide the jutsu as it were, but still. Rani's spirit soared. He was offering to make her current form flesh, four arms and all. She might even be able to make herself taller. Coupled with her ring, he would return her to full glory and more. She would be able to fully experience the world as she saw fit, without sleeping for days at time, forced to maintain her tenuous hold over this farce of a figure. If her doll body shattered, she could take another, though it would be difficult. If she was flesh and something managed to kill her, kill her properly. Fear reared its ugly head. Nay, she couldn't do it. You make an enticing offer. She swallowed the sudden surge of need. But nay, not yet. And refrain from doing anything that would imperil thine health. I would not see thee come to harm. So you do care. It is, dogged fool. She slapped his arm and let her lead him onward. You should learn to hold thy tongue. But your smiling Agenuf he folded a little when two elbows hit his ribs. How can someone so small hit so hard? Rani's glare promised pain. Naruto laughed, sly fox that he was. HRMPH. Perhaps he wasn't quite the fool she thought him to be. Dense he might be perhaps, and certainly was at times but a keen mind lurked beneath the surface. When forced to apply himself, he held a rather sharp wit. Didn't stop her from taking her frustrations out on him, though. Oh he was still laughing when she pinched him. Okay, okay I give jeez, ya moody girl. They walked in companionable silence for a moment more. A howl pierced the mistuad. Ah, uh, seemed Blade had found what he sought, then. Naruto nudged her side. You're really fond of the big guy, aren't you? Blade and Eiji both are willing to give too much to me. Rani watched her shadow range ahead of them, smiling softly. Yet they both understand. What lieth beyond the dark path? Her four hands clenched at her sides as she recalled the grim fate that lie in wait. That I must betray everything and rid the world of what came before. Ominous. He hummed, but didn't protest. Should I add thee to the list? To her good eye sought his as she offered him a sultry smile. Another one, kind of heart. Kinder even, than they. Much to her delight, he flushed and looked away. Rani preened but a little, inordinately proud of her accomplishment. A hot tea would seem the teaser could be teased in turn she would savor this victory. It came to a fight once they reached Lindgrave of course, as all things did. How Knight Darywell was a savage sort, even trapped within the jail, he refused to hear reason. Scarce had they come upon him, then he attacked. Naruto tried to talk him down as was his wont, but the poor soul was madness incarnate and lived up to his name in all his wide glory. It was scarcely a fight, more a slaughter. Rani was only just preparing her most powerful spell when Naruto and Blade fell upon him. The doomed soul didn't last ten seconds, in the end it was Blade's well blade that did him in. Skewered upon the ground, he wasted away into nothing, dissolving into a bevy of runes, runes that soon became theirs. The amount was not insubstantial. Poor guy. Naruto knelt, retrieving the man's fallen blade. Does this happen to all tarnished? Eventually. Some. Rani confessed. But thou art no tarnished. And good thing for that. He muttered, hefting the sword. Hey hey, Blade any chance you could teach me how to use this thing. Don't see why not the hulking warrior lumbered over to consider his prize. Seems a good sword and you've got decent reflexes. Might be able to teach you a thing or two. Nice. On a whim, Rani made her decision. For Blade, his reward was merely being in her presence. But Naruto deserved a reward, did he not? I have a gift for thee. She reached into her satchel and pulled out a small parcel, wrapped in white cloth. I will not always be able to accompany you on your travels. Should you and Blade range forth again, I would have you take this with you. Four hands pressed it into his two. Take it, with my blessing. Awa, a mini Rani Naruto peeled back the cloth and cooed, cradling it with his hands. How adorable. Shame flooded Rani's very being. 
What had she been thinking, giving him that she'd done it on a whim, but now she almost found herself regretting it. The way he cradled the little thing, then placed it in the pouch at his side was gentle with it. Almost too gentle. Had he ascertained the doll's true purpose did he see her ulterior motive through it, she would be able to observe him, communicate even, if need be, should anything go awry. It was a useful tool, all things considered, and it would serve to better her measure off him. But now Naruto was looking at her, and she knew that look. Nay, she backed away quickly, knowing full well what he was about to do. Do not embrace me again. Remarkably, he didn't. The baffling blonde just smiled at her. You're really a sweetheart, ain't ya? Rani didn't budge. So you won't embrace me, then? Not if you don't want me to, came the reply. Her tongue betrayed her. Pity. His eyes widened. What? Blade laughed aloud. It's Rani flailed, arms waving wildly. This form hath loosened my tongue. I've let slip too much. Hey, mine words no heed. Naruto most certainly did not. On the contrary, his cheeky grin said he'd remember every bit of it, much to her chagrin. Forget what thou'st heard the words came easily to Rani once more, her face burning with shame. Forget. Maybe no, no, no. That won't work. Unless. Naruto was muttering to himself again. It was driving Rani mad. He'd been like this for several days now, hunched over a crude table he'd crafted, nearly to the exclusion of all else. Ordinarily such wouldn't have bothered her over much, she had much to do, the city of Nakron need be found, and she could scarcely spend every waking moment observing his comings and goings. But his refusal to let anyone near, nor allow her to see what he was working on. That aroused her curiosity, and it, unlike her fragile body, was not something so easily put abed. Even now the witch found herself pursing her lips as she considered the top plane of his back before her, stern shoulders hunched over the table as he scribbled something down in a book. His poor vest had fallen to rags at long last, leaving him clad in little more than the mesh undershirt beneath until they could find him proper armor. The cold didn't seem to bother him anyway, not down here in his study. He was much, much, much too preoccupied to give it even the slightest iota of attention. Among other things, hem, Rani tilted her head to the right, then tilted it some more. He really didn't notice her. Aha, Naruto grunted suddenly and jotted something down. That one's a keeper. Might use it later. And if her gaze lingered when he wasn't looking well, who was to know a soul she still might be, and her body no longer of flesh, but Rani found she could find things pleasing to the eye. The way the faint light of the candle set fire dancing off his skin. That sort of thing. Purely in the aesthetic sense, of course. To suggest otherwise was treason. Might need some advice. His words had her ear perking up, if only for a moment. Could probably ask her. He was fit as only a proper warrior could be, not over muscled like some brute she'd seen, but neither could he be called lean, either. His was a proper balance, the sort one might expect from one accustomed to little armor and light movements. Even in his mania he moved with cat-like grace. Was he even aware of how dangerous he appeared his posture hunched, eyes shadowed, the faintest smile plucking those whiskered cheeks, dimpling down into lips she could imagine crushing against her own. Treachery Rainy reared back with a start, eye wide. Where had that thought come from? She could not. She would not. She must not. That way lay only pain. Incensed, anger got the better of her. What art thou doing? Lights flared. Rani Naruto yelped and pivoted in place, knocking the table aside, nearly cutting a circle in the floor of her tower as he whirled to face her. Such was his speed. Nothing not a thing nope. She beheld the panic burning in his eyes sure as day. If that weren't enough, she'd seen him hide something behind his back just now. It wasn't her doll, thank the stars. She didn't know what she'd do if she found him playing about with that. No, she'd glimpsed a flash of ink in some parchment just now. Was he writing something he'd mentioned to she earlier? What manner of plot was this? Is that what I think it is? He dug his heels in. Depends. The ghost of a scowl touched her face. On. Naruto squared his shoulders. On what you think it is. Oh, he was going to be like that. Was he well? Two could play this game. Her left foot began to tap against the ground. Cease this foolishness at once, Naruto. He lifted his chin in millish defiance and didn't budge. No idea what you're talking about, Rani. She huffed angrily at him. Naruto. He smiled right back. Rani. Once more, an impasse stretched between the two of them. Rani crossed all four arms before her bosom. This time she was determined to be the victor. No tricks or traps would save him this time. He might be strong, but she had the patience of eternity. If he thought to outlast her, he would be sorely disappointed. Look, Naruto stabbed a finger behind her. Its blade. Against her better judgment, Rani heeded his words and spun. There was no sign of her loyal stepbrother to be found. Not a jot. Naturally, when she looked back, Naruto was nowhere to be seen either. The fiendish fox had taken his chance and scarpered. All that remained of him were a few faint motes of golden light, fading laughter and the book he'd been scribbling in. Rani looked left. Rani looked right. Nary a soul in sight. Had he forgotten it in his haste? Her brow furrowed as she approached the worn leather tome as a sheet of vellum. A wave of her hand flipped it open. Blank pages fluttered past her vision. That didn't make of sense. She'd seen him writing in the Y thing, so whereas she snatched at one, stopping at a random place and held it up in the mage light. Her reward was great. He'd written on the back of the pages, the better to hide his work. This was no mere journal. Nay, not quite. She squinted to decipher the atrocious handwriting. How to cheer up the moody blue girl. Her spirit stilled. What was this? A series of wild entries were scrawled across the page, written in a rough hand. 
Tickle her, maybe nah, won't work. Body's a puppet. He best not or she'd curse him. Does she like food can she even eat as she is now ask Gigi. Her hand fed out, turning to another page. From what Blades told me, she's had a rough time of it. Try jokes. Maybe does she like jokes maybe find her family she's gotta have some in this world, even if she won't talk about him. Here good eye widened as she continued to peruse his notes. This thighs was not a diary at all. On and on it went as her eye roved down the page, a comprehensive list not of sordid schemes as she'd feared dreaded but something else entirely. An odd feeling welled up in her soul, she couldn't bear to look anymore, and so she closed the tome and clutched it to her. Had she been capable of blushing her pale blue face would have been rose red. Fool of a boy. He was looking for ways to help her, actively and passively alike. How very sweet. She hugged the book tighter still, overcome with a rare pang of emotion. He truly wasn't the fool he seemed to be, and yet she found herself taken in by this silly sentiment all the same. Ranny the witch did not giggle, no matter what some might say. She would miss moments such as these, when their time of parting came. Her breath hitched at the thought. His thighs was for the best. He would understand. Eventually. Once she told him. Once she explained it to him. There were things she must do alone. This was her fate. Her destiny. Once Nokron was uncovered and the Finger Slayer blade found, her journey would begin. Down the dark path of the Empyrean would she go at long last, to change the world alone. For alone she must be, if her scheme was to succeed. It was better this way. The others would be safe from the Fingers and their assassins, until her work was done. Why, then why did her heart hurt so, thinking of leaving them him? She mustn't get attached. She'd told herself this. And yet, Aha Blade's voice jolted her back to reality as he came up the stairs. There you are, Ranny. He trailed off, no doubt seeing her clutching the book to her bosom. Ranny's head snapped up with a hiss. You saw nothing. Blade marched right back round. Not a thing. Ranny glared at the space he'd occupied until she heard the clank of the lift receding downward. So too did her thoughts turn inward. Naruto deserved a proper reward weight. What was that last note, scribbled on the cover? If she won't smile, just make her squeal. More pranks. Her smile died an ugly death. Naruto. Naruto heard the shout and knew she'd seen his notes. His face drained of all color. She found the book, didn't she? Iji's face remained inscrutable behind his helm as he hammered out a new set of knives. Indeed she did. Armor. That is indeed what I have given thee, yes. I get it. Naruto held up the dark blue and black leather, regarding the bits of steel interposed within. But really this is for me. Ranny preened but a little as he considered it. I designed it myself. Well, the design had been hers, but Eiji had done the smithing, the mending, and the making. She'd not tell Naruto that. He'd never let her live it down. It was a fine piece of work as she said so herself, and she did. Rather reminiscent of the armor worn by the black knives, yet designed for a male body, it was forged of a darker blue, almost navy, even. It beat seeing him stumbling, around in those rags all day. His voice warbled a little. No one's ever given me armor before I'm kinda touched. And hey, it's light armor, too I can move in this I'm gonna put it on right now. Her eyes widened as he ripped off his shirt. Oh me, sense reasserted itself a moment later. Don't do that here out. A flustered Ranny was an adorable Ranny. For Naruto, there was no greater truth in this world. He'd taken his shirt off as a joke, but even so, he didn't expect her to start slinging. So quickly after he'd received his new armor, Ranny had taken one look at him and practically chased him out of her chamber before could fully finish undressing himself. Why was she shy it wasn't anything she'd not seen before. You truly are a dense one, aren't you? Hey I'm not that bad look, we'll finish getting dressed and go back up, no problem. Enjoying your new armor, are we a nasally voice intoned ahead of him as he tugged on the greaves. You would be impressed by something so meager as this. Naruto knew that voice and wished he didn't. Just like that, he good mood turned to so much as in his mouth. Leave it to a certain snake to stick his head where he wasn't wanted. No, calling this man a snake would have been an insult to Orochimaru. At least the snake Sanon had managed to somewhat turn over a new leaf come the end of things. Ah, but Perceptor Selivis. Monstrous didn't even begin to describe the emotions he felt from him. He thought that mask and gaudy hat hit his face, in truth his emotions were all too easy to read. Utterly unrepentant in every way, he reveled in chaos and pain, harming others and worse. He'd no proof to act upon, but Thale feeling around him persisted. Ranny said he had his uses and perhaps the man did, but that didn't mean he had to like him. And he didn't. Bastard was always plotting something. Why do you want? Bastard he pivoted, giving him the blackest look he could muster. I'm not running another errand for you. Not after last time. No need, the man sniffed. I've found an able assistant in your absence. Unlike you, they do not balk. Enough with the platitudes. Out. With. It. Down to brass tacks. Then the man's mask hit his sneer, though his words didn't. Very well. Stop wasting our lady's time. He bowled on with a scoff, bad enough that she lavishes attention on that senile old giant and that beguiled. Of hers. But you he has no need of a worthless stray like you. Still he sniped back. You are a blunt instrument, little more. I thought perhaps you might yet have your uses, but you'd since proven me wrong. Naruto stepped in. He knew that tone. He loathed it. Because I wouldn't give that girl your potion. The little man didn't waver. You do not have the stomach required for this path. Let me eat him. Hirama, no. You'll get indigestion. Just one bite. That's all I ask. A little off the top. He almost found himself tempt. That would be his head, you know. 
Precisely. You do realize she has no use for you. Selavus continued to twist the knife as he stood there, seething. You are a court jester, little more. She will tire of you before long as she is others. Fine. He wanted a war of words he hadn't been idle while he was here. Funny, coming from the guy who reminds me of Orochimaru. The mage stilled. Whatever does that mean? It means I don't trust you. He grabbed the preceptor by his shirt. You step one foot out of line, and the foot comes off. My, my, quite the aggressive thing she's made you. A hand batted his palm away. I didn't think you'd come to care for a doll. She is not a doll. Anger slipped its leash at last, and he reared back with a hiss. She's a person unlike you. You're a monster. How do you even live with yourself? Selavis went still. Be that as it may, I am far too useful for her to cast aside. Oh, Naruto returned his sneer with a far more fearsome one, head pushing against his. And what have you done lately? A blade keeps Rani safe. I make her happy. Eiji provides good counsel as well as repairing our weapons. Hell, the three of us will probably find Nakron long before you do. But you all you've done is cower in your tower. So the question you need to ask yourself is this what good are you? The man balked, and his point made, the blonde whirled away, stalking off before the preceptor could hope to get a word it. He wasn't quite quick enough. The sly sorcerer caught him at the door. You do realize she will die if things continue as they are. Naruto froze. I speak of Lady Rani, of course. Selavus practically used smugness as he pivoted to face him. How long will that body last? How long can she keep her soul shackled to that feeble doll before it fades entirely when he didn't reply? The madman tittered softly. If you truly wish to grant her the destiny she desires, to free her from the shackles of her fate, then you must kill General Radon and release the stars. Only then will you be able to find that which she seeks. You want me to kill a man on your word alone, Naruto scoffed, not believing him for a moment. You're lying. I am many things, but a liar is not one of them. A scroll bounced off his. My associate Selen will confirm everything I just told you. Seek her out if you don't believe me. I ain't killing anyone. An angry blue eye gleamed over his shoulder as he wrestled his temper down. Mustn't rise to the bait. Thanks for the tip. I'll look into it. Or perhaps you could simply ask Lady Rani. There was something in Selivis' voice now. After all, the dear general is her beloved brother. Naruto knew the sorcerer was trying to sow doubt in his heart. Even so, his world went cold. What? Oh, the slimy snake smirked, reeling him in. My, my. Didn't she tell you it must have slipped her mind? Since our fair lady seems to have forgotten, perhaps I should also tell you of Preter Reichard or poor, poor Renala. You have a brother. Granny shifted restlessly in her chair atop her books, trying and failing to quell the sudden pang of dread she experienced at Naruto's inquiry. It was no use. His glare pinned her, rooted her where she sat. Worry writhed up in her heart, fracturing her calm, scattering her self-control to the four winds. She knew that look well. It was the look of an angry man, one who could not be reasoned with, couldn't be dissuaded, nor distracted, nor diverted. And so she schooled her face into an impassive mask, lifted her chin, looked him straight in the eye, and spoke. Oh, whatever brought this on? Naruto absolutely twitched. If there had been a door to her chamber, he would have slammed it behind him. Lacking such an amenity, he bowled forward instead, nigh on storming into her personal space. A little bird told me. He wasn't done with her, yet. Not by a country mile. You have two brothers, he loomed over her in her chair. A mother and a father, too. Funny how you failed to mention that. I do not. Wish to speak of it, he parroted the words back at her with a snarl. I thought so. Or at least I thought I knew. Seems I was wrong, how could you leave them like that? Rani's world went cold, colder than the dark moon spell for which she was known. Because he knew. Naruto, knew. The look in his eye said it all, both judged and despaired of her in equal measure. Her sole consolation was that he didn't seem to be damning her just yet. Mayhap that would come later. Which begged the question, how did he know? He'd not left the tower recently, and they'd had no visitors that she knew of. Blade would sooner die than speak of her past, while Eiji was loath to even remember what transpired. So then who who wanted to see her joy turn to ash in her mouth who would dare speak of such a thing, let alone stand to gain from said revelation, the looming rift that might form between her and Naruto as a result the answer came to her quickly. Almost painfully so. Selavis. Her temper was a slow thing to stir, but stir now it did, cold and cruel. That slimy snake she'd make him rue the day. But after, first she must make this right before affairs spiraled out of her control. Pivoting but a little in her seat, she steepled her four hands anew, fighting to keep the pain from her voice. How much did he tell you? He told me enough. Naruto nearly bit off her words. Is it true? Blast. Rani's throat closed despite herself. You must understand, I had no. Twin fingers fed her forehead, cutting her retort painfully short. Is it true? He was well and truly furious with her now, for reasons she couldn't comprehend. Why for her keeping secrets he'd seemed fine with it when last they spoke. Why would he be so angry now he, who had never poked her, never prodded her beyond her means not truly to now be incensed beyond measure, it baffled her beyond measure. Did you know what happened to them what they became her silence must have been answer enough, because he bridled. How could you leave them like that? I would have killed killed, he tore at his hair, to have a huge family like yours, especially growing up. The naked pain in his eyes brought her up short. All my life, I grew up with nothing. I came from nothing. To just have a single sibling that would have meant the world to me. You had more and you abandoned yours. I thought you understood. Rainy reared back, eye wide. 
Then she surged forward. I do understand she hopped down off her chair and glared up at him blast his height as best her feeble frail body would allow. I loved my family and a something cracked in her body as she moved a tad too fast, but she paid it no heed. I do love them. Then why did you let them fall apart like that? What would you have me do? She grabbed a fistful of his hair and yanked his head down to hers. Storm Volcano Manor and Slay Rikert with what army we were but three before you came along. I cannot hope to face him. A single blow would surely shatter this body of mine and he would devour my soul. Is that what you want me to join his wretched family? Naruto recoiled, but she was too lost in her rage to care. And let us not forget dear brother Radon Rani cracked the verbal whip that was her tongue, relishing in his flinch, the great general Radon foremost warrior of his generation. Strongest of the demigods as I am now, I'm not but kindling compared to him she snapped her fingers, producing a hollow pop. In his prime he brought Melenia herself low, laid her at death's door, he was a breath away from killing her he should have too. But for his blasted honor he would have too, if that petty creature hadn't unleashed her rod even now mad as he is he, he remains the foremost warrior of his generation. He'd tear blade and edgy apart. His resolve was wavering. She no longer cared. I didn't mean. And my mother she snapped her teeth at him when he made to speak, silencing him anew. I confess my death played a small part in her current state, but she was broken long before my machinations took flight I wish it were otherwise t was no fault of mine she fell to madness after Father Radigan cast her aside for Queen Merica. Remarkably, he rallied and pulled away. I'm sorry. I didn't think this through, didn't consider your feelings. No nay never she was well and truly in a rage now, lashing out at him, at her family, at the world, at everything that had gone so terribly, horribly wrong. No you never do she could no longer shed tears in this body, but here in this moment, she would if she could. Blind, why fool her shoulders shook, hands balled up at her sides, itching to grab him again if only to slap him silly. Thou art the biggest blonde braggart I have ever had the displeasure of meeting and I hath no more than a few. His eyes sparked but he held his tongue. She wished he wouldn't. She wanted him to shout and rage and rant with her. Yet he couldn't even give her that, would he? She grit her teeth to stifle a snarl but there could be no denying the ire that burned within her. Time and time again you'll charge ahead, and to hell with the consequences. A finger jabbed up at his chin, pricking his lip. What if you die or worse become like them I could not stand it something tore out of her and she. Wasn't sure if it was a gasp or a sob. I wish I was the monster you thought I was. Perhaps then I could harden my heart to this. His face crumpled. I don't think you're a monster. No she whirled away, arms crossed before her. Thy deed say otherwise. Get out. I do not wish to speak to you anymore on this day. Naruto hung his head but didn't budge. She couldn't bear it. She needed to be alone. Now, art thou deaf she rounded on him. I set out. Leave my presence at once. Ah, uh, the cold pang of discord flowered anew within her heart. Had she broken him and who would you have me send to face mine family? Then still she drove the fell dagger of her words deep. You are you truly that arrogant you are immortal. These are demigods. They would tear you limb from limb and cast your corpse for the crows. Still no response. Her temper slipped its leash. Why do you stand there so have you gone deaf? Naruto didn't listen, of course. Why would he? he never did when he stepped forward she stepped back but he was just too blasted quick. Strong arms wrapped around Rani's back, even as his chin came down around her shoulders. Her frail form creaked and she kicked out against him to a veil. Blasted bastard held fast. Eventually her struggles lessened. Even if her temper didn't at first. Release me at once she could not cry. This very instant. It still hurt. No. He did not, the silly fool. I'll make it right, Rani. You will not you cannot. I can his head butted against hers and she realized his eyes had gone red. A blink and it was gone. Just you watch. You cannot save them. There is no known means to reverse the scarlet rot, nor to undo what Reichard has become. To say nothing of mother. She bit her lip to stifle a pitiful noise. They are shells of their former selves. You cannot save them. Abandon this fool quest. Wanna bet his hand swept up under her chin. Steel blue eyes blazed at her. Believe in me. Just you wait. I'll drag them back. It was foolish to even hope. Yet a small part of her dared. And if you cannot. A tiny, sad smile bloomed across those whiskered cheeks. Then I'll put him to rest. Least I can do. His peace said, he released her, butted his head against hers one last time, and walked away. Nary another word nor goodbye was uttered. He just told her to wait and marched out. The gall she wanted to spit, to storm after him, slap him upside the head and shout at him besides. Do not die her voice betrayed her, echoing after his fading footfalls. I will brook no disobedience in this matter. Right, right. He waved without looking back as he descended the stairs. Just stay here. I'll have a surprise for you, one way or another. Something wet ran down her cheek. Oh, the realization broke Ranny. Her body could not cry. She knew this in her heart. But her soul could. Rani felt her knees hit the ground. And if she shed a single tear no one saw. Blade was waiting for him when he left the rise. In hindsight Naruto wasn't surprised. They hadn't been quiet. Try as he might, he couldn't help but feel proud about that last bit. Arguing with her had not gone as intended. Still it had given him focus. Clarity. Rani wasn't the villain Celavis had painted her as. Sneaky sorcerer. He'd pay for that. He had a goal in mind now, vague though it was, if not necessarily a destination. But first, he could feel her shadow watching him, waiting for an answer. How much of that did you hear? Enough. The wily half-wolf pushed himself off a crumbling wall. 
Wouldn't be surprised if Queen Merica herself heard that ruckus. Spare me. Naruto felt his face burn at the reminder but pressed on, pushing past him. If you're here to try and talk some sense into me, don't bother. He stooped down, grabbed his back, slung it over his shoulder, and kept walking. Already got enough of that from Rani. I know. Much to his surprise, her shadow fell into step with him seamlessly. Sorry, you have to find out this way. It's fine. No. No, he wasn't. Not in the least. Damn Celevis. Had he know this would happen, he wanted to smack the old mage. Probably would, once he was done here. She's been hurting all this time. He looked out into the mist instead, pondering his next move. Why haven't you and Eiji done anything? Blade fell silent. But only for a moment. We have, as best we can. When he finally spoke he sounded even more chagrined than he felt. I've got a strong sword arm, but I can't face an army on my own. And the old smith isn't what he used to be. Celevis wouldn't dare stick his neck out for fear of a witch hunter lopping it off. You know his kind. Note to self. Lead a hunter to him. You can't expect me to stand by and do nothing. Know that, too. A fist cuffed his shoulder. That's why I'm going with you. A spark of confused irritation kindled deep within his. I don't even know where I'm going. Perfect. He received a lupine grin in exchange. All the more reason to need a guide. Naruto stopped short. Which is closer? Blade, bless his simple soul, cottoned on almost immediately. That would be Lady Renala, without a doubt. Only, and here he looked away, scratching at his snout, she's not in her right mind at the moment. So I've been told. Tell me more about her. She's locked away in the academy, rebirthing her followers over and over. His right ear twitched, intrigue rearing its pleasant head. Rebirth the heck is that a jutsu or something? That's what it sounds like, I reckon. Blade gave a half-hearted shrug of his own. Supposedly it's imperfect, that, or there's a missing component. Lady Rani didn't seem to know, and I didn't care to ask at the time. Craning his neck back, he spared the tower a glance. I could go up there and ask. A crash came from the upper level, followed by a frustrated shout. Both men winced. Never mind. Naruto prodded him. There's something else you're not telling me. Not by choice, my friend. For the first time since he'd met him, Rani's shadow shook. Physically shuddered, as he'd never shivered before. I've seen the things in that room, through the looking glass. Another tremor, now. She's got a gaggle of giggling girls dragging themselves across the floor, biting at your ankles. The room itself is a trap. Anyone who enters doesn't emerge again. They become one of those things. But she's not actively trying to harm people, is she Naruto posited. She just defends herself from intruders. For the most part, yes. Which would you say is the most dangerous he had to know, else he'd never be able to live with himself. To themselves, or others who should be dealt with first. Raiden's trapped in Caled last I heard, before his very eyes, a finger pointed to the east, while old Rikard's hiding in Mount Jelmir, near the Volcano Manor, supposedly. Now that lone digit swept toward the west. Both are clear across the kingdom in any case, and in different directions at that. What's your plan I know that look? Got something up your sleeve, do you? Maybe. A mad plan, but just mad enough to work. Naruto told him. Aha then the way ahead is pleasingly simple blade smacked a fist into an open palm. We fight our way through, with fang and claw. The ghost of a smile touched his face. We're doing this then here now. Nothing less for my sister. The old wolf puffed out his. They shook on it. For Lady Rani, then. Naruto laughed and clapped his shoulder. For that silly blue girl who can't be honest with herself. Oi, now surely she's not that bad. Naruto quirked a lone eyebrow. Blade demurred with a sigh. Aye, maybe she is. Rani peered at them from her broken window. And as she did, a frown with her face. What were they plotting? One of them Naruto raised a fist into the air. He didn't turn to face her, nor could she quite hear his words from here, but the gesture stuck with her. A stray breeze blew across the rise, ruffling his unruly blonde hair. He kept his fist in the air a moment longer and spoke again. The winds carried his words to her. We're off. Her soul skipped a beat. Take care. Her tongue, loosened by emotion, betrayed her utterly, and the words escaped her. She knew at once that he had hurt her, if only because his shoulders stiffened. Whiskered cheeks dimpled and even from here, she knew he must be smiling. Rani's shattered soul seared at having been caught out and she ducked back in. Take care she was no housewife to send them off, no mere mewling maiden to wish them well. The witch buried her head in all four of her hands. Blast. Blast it. Blast it all. He'd best come back safe. The last she saw of them, they marched into the mists. To be a knight was to hold honor above all. Honor to one's house, honor to one's lord or lady, and honor to one's self. Such vows could not be foreseen, even unto death, indeed, as tarnished they transcended it. Which made it somewhat flabbergasting for Moongrim, Carrion Knight, when he found himself face to face with his own demise. Such was no unexpected, of course, as the last line of defense for Lady Renala, it fell to him to ward off any assassins or wood visitors. Few indeed were those who made it past him. And yet here he found himself, sprawled out like a helpless recruit in the muck, beaten and battered from head to toe. Sorry about this, a young, drawling voice echoed over him. Take a little nap for a bit, would ya? A fist descended and he fell into the sweet embrace of slumber. Forgive me, my lady I've failed. The doors parted. Renala paid them little heed at first. Why should she? She had no fond thoughts for doors. Doors were meant for closing, not opening. 
Tight and shut and locked they were and meant to be, nothing more. My, there was an odd thought, wasn't it she'd been having an awful lot of those as of late. These days she dwelt on little beyond such, her precious sweetings and the golden egg entrusted to her by her beloved. Dear, sweet Radagon, foul, treacherous Radagon he who had forsaken her for that which Marika cast her aside as if she were nothing, no one, no she hated him. She loved him. She no longer wished to see him. She yearned for him. She had been better than this on before. She knew she shouldn't be this way, her thoughts in tatters, but it was so very hard to think these days. Ah, but the doors were opening still, and the noise was such that she could no longer ignore it. Her thoughts were, it not entirely dispelled, shoved aside for the moment. Those doors were not meant to open. And yet they had. Which mean betrayal. Moongram had turned his blade on her at last, like all the rest, hadn't he how else could one slip past him so soon after the last? No matter. She would defend herself to the last, broken though she was. Her sweetings were already moving to engage the intruder, dragging themselves across the floor in their haste to welcome to him. She could not see his face within the dark hood he wore, but she heard the noise he gave when he saw her children, a grunt of confusion, and dare she say, disgust. Hush, little Culver. She hummed softly to herself. I'll soon birth thee anew, a sweeting, fresh and pure. Gloved fingers peeled back his hood, exposing his face. Sorry, I'm afraid I'll have to pass. Thought trailed off as she laid eye on the warrior. This blonde boy who had just walked right past her sweetings, heedless of them nipping at his heels. He saw her. He looked up at her now, peered past her golden shield, with eyes of molten gold. Those eyes, a look in them, gentle yet strong. You're Rani's mom, ain't ya? There was a grim countenance about him, and a staid boldness that she recognized. He reminded her of him. Raylegan, lacking in stature perhaps, and not a hint of those flowing red locks, but the eyes, oh the eyes. They were gold, just like her beloved. Her mind flinched aside at the thought. I'm here to ask you about this whole rebirth thing you've got going on. He called up to her. Would you mind answering a few questions? Curiosity dawned with Renala's ravaged mind, bringing with it a rare moment of lucidity. You wish to be reborn after all, then? No, no, he waved both hands emphatically. Not me. I'm here to ask for another. How does it work his eyes settled upon her egg? Got something to do with that, does it? Too clever by half, this one. Alas, her moment of clarity faded, taking that sliver of sanity with it. Come, she crooned, beckoning unto him. Let me show thee. Don't bother. A low, familiar voice intoned, a bitter blade to cut through her thoughts like a knife. She's lost her mind. You'll have to snap her out of it. Oi the blonde rounded on him. I can handle this, blade. There's no need to fight her. Her gaze fixed on him, and a fur of her old self stirred. Blade. Half wolf. Failure. Unable to protect it which she valued above all else. He let her die that night, the voices crooned in her head, dark in their dirge. Kill him. Avenge her. Avenge Rani. Yes, eyes. She must avenge her dearest daughter. Such trespass could not go unpunished. There would be no rebirth for him. Only suffering. Only pain. Only torment. And there at the end of it all, an ignoble end for such a worthless failure of a servant. Blade. The half-wolf stiffened. Aye. You failed my daughter you let her perish. He didn't rise to the bait. I've no idea what you're on about. Her shield fractured. At least there must be recompense for your temerity. Wait the boy stepped up beside him, distracting her, if only for a moment. Just hold on for a second and let me explain Rani ain't dead she's alive. Renala's world ground to a halt. What trickery was this her daughter Rani alive? Hope flowered in her heart, only to wither and die a moment later. Another crack etched itself in her protective shield in her mind. An ugly feeling rose within her. How cruel. Betrayal after betrayal, heaped upon lies and falsehoods. All had forsaken her, save her sweet, sweetings. And now this boy his knave came here, lying with his forked tongue was that his game to try and stir hope in her, fleeting though it might be, only to tear it away from her it hurt. It hurt, it hurt, it hurt she hurt as she hadn't hurt since Radigan's betrayal, since Rani's death, since Rikard's blasphemy, since Radon's descent into madness so much pain pain and now this. She raised her gaze from the egg, still cradled against her, eyes smoldering. You lie. I really don't how could he smile so, when he spoke wickedness if you hear me out, I'm sure we can come to an understanding. Another fracture. Another break. Her fingers tightened round Radigan's egg, scratching the surface. Why must he persist in such spiteful slander? Do not defile my daughter with your falsehoods she ground her teeth, strangling a snarl. Let her rest in peace. Oi I ain't lying look, he reached into his pocket, I've got a doll of her right here. She can communicate through this. Here listen. He offered it unto her, but it was silent in his grasp. His face paled. Ranny a little help mind saying something still he blanched. Shaking the doll availed him not. Don't tell me she took another nap of all the time to fall asleep. Indeed, the doll said not a word, and with each moment of its silence, Renala ceased anew. More ticks and now he thought to deceive her with a facimile. I won't have another whiff of thy rotten breath. Her shield shattered around her, shards of golden glass falling to the floor like so much rain. Trembling feet alighted upon the cold, unfeeling ground, standing for the first time in an age. And with it her fury, it all came rushing back. For so long she had lain in her grief, wallowed in as a wretch would. She'd not fought or resisted, nor raised a hand against anyone, save for self-defense. Even as her husband forsook her, her family abandoned her, children perished one by one. 
as the academy turned against her and shuddered her away, not a once had she willingly sought to harm a single solitary soul. But even the mad have their limits. Renala had just reached hers. They thought her mad, did they she would show them mad. She was no god, not a demigod, even. But she was a mistress of magic, a warrior, despite her mortality. Once upon a time she had waged war against Radig and himself, and fought a deity to a standstill. She had stood tall against a god, and this boy dared. Drawing herself up to her full, towering height, she conjured her staff to her right hand and loomed large over this whelp of a boy with his unfaithful hound. Was it wrong that she took some small petty pleasure in the way their eyes widened, nor the silence that followed perhaps? But she cared not a jot for their thoughts. All around her, the very room shifted, a pearly white moon rising behind her as the floor became so much water. This was her world. Her domain, her power returned to her, if only for these few fleeting minutes. I am Queen Renala of the full moon, she intoned solemnly, and I have had enough. You up. The blonde boy drawled the word out, stretching the syllable into absurdity. You're definitely Rani's mom. He kept speaking the fool, heedless of his own peril. That's her look, through and through. Damn you really are tall. Renala absolutely hissed. Enough of thy unbearable breath. A comet of purest light struck the blonde braggart in the and hurled him away. His body skipped across the shallow waters, smoking and spitting so much steam. Without bothering to ascertain his fate, she rounded on her daughter's stoic shadow. Credit where it was due, Blade did not waver. Nor did he draw his sword. He stared his death in the eye and seemed to welcome it wholeheartedly. More fool he, to his end would be a swift one, even if he didn't deserve such. And for for thee, disloyal dog. She raised her scepter with a sneer. Join mine daughter in destined death. Someone tugged her sleeve. Renala whirled in place. Sorry about this. Something struck her in the stomach, staggering her. She doubled over with a gasp, folded over the clenched knuckles even now protruding into her torso. But only for a moment. Her hand cracked out, batting the blonde aside. A spellbot winged out after him and was summarily slapped aside. Then another, another still, each casually deflected with a single hand, as someone had once done before him. Hatred boiled into mindless frothing fury, red overtaking her vision. Renala raised her scepter with a shriek, and the battle was joined. Radig and you wretched man. What in the blue hell is a Rada? Ayak? Even in madness, Renala's spells hit hard. Terribly hard. Naruto cursed himself for the slip even as he hurtled backwards, armor smoldering, face twisted in pain. He struck the water's surface like an arrow loosed from a bow. Solidly. Unlike normal water it held thy's time and he slammed into it as one would a bright wall. He'd let himself get hit again. Sloppy. Kakashi would have face bombed. Very sloppy in. Duria would have torn strips out of his hide for making a rookie mistake like this. He should have dodged that. He knew he could have dodged it. And yet, he just couldn't help this. He knew he shouldn't restrain himself, knew not to hold back, not against someone like this. Renala wanted him dead. Probably planned to take his head and mount it on her wall after this fiasco. Holding himself in check only promised to make things infinitely more difficult in the long run. Rani's mother certainly wasn't about to show him the same courtesy. One good punch. That would be all it took to lay her low in theory. But this was Rani's mamma had if he hurt her even more than he already had what if he killed her hesitation stilled his hand thus far, keeping him from finishing the fight or breaking out his more esoteric techniques. She wasn't a demigod. She wasn't sturdy. A raw racing in would tear right through her, to say nothing of. Above you. Blue eyes drifted open. Yeah, yeah, I see her common. He was still pondering that thought when the queen of the full moon swept her staff forth and howled out another sorcery. With a put-upon sigh, Naruto crossed both arms over his face and inhaled deeply, filling his lungs with air and chakra alike. Not a moment too soon at that. A pillar of purest light smote him from on high. This time, the water offered no resistance, sending him crashing down into the dark depths below. Water bubbled up around him as he spun, then righted himself. She trying to drown me or something this is the third time she sent me down here. In his heart he knew could have thrashed his way to the surface with ease, raced back up to rejoin the fight with Blade. Instead he hung there, weightless, suspended in the water. Bleary blue eyes squinted up from the darkness, brow furrowing as he thumbed his chin and glared eyes, glared at the conflict above. He hadn't gone too deep. He could still see for the most part. Here, too. From the depths he heard Blade bark a challenge and go on the offensive. Your fight is with me, which not him. Rani's shadow indistinct loosed a mighty roar and struck Renala's ribs with the flat of his sword, sending her stumbling away with a cry of his own. She tried to raise her staff, failed as he swatted it down. Back, back, back he drove her, never once giving her a moment to breathe, no chance to use her greater intelligence and cast another devastating spell. High a rueful smile tugged at the blonde's mouth. Good boy. Blade was best doggo. By that reckoning, a bit of and a little pain were worth the price it if meant he could knock the carrying queen back to her senses. The aggression behind this assault was another matter. Renala had been raging for the better part ten minutes now, and she still didn't show any signs of slowing down which meant they'd had to keep her down. Closing his eyes he pressed his palms together and mustered his chakra. And for a moment, just a moment, he felt a hand on his shoulder. Please. A man's voice seemed to whisper in his ear. Help her. Warm light suffused his skin, bubbled up from the water, lit everything a gentle shade of gold. Muffled ears heard Renala shout something. A warning or imprecation, it didn't matter. She'd seen him. 
Of course she had. It was impossible to hide something like this. Had no doubt this would be visible. Didn't matter. Ranny's mother hit hard. Yes, there could be no doubt about that. But not hard enough. Pain meant little to him. He'd felt far worse and against stronger foes. What were a few spells compared to that? Hirama realized what he was about to attempt a moment before he did. Well, it's your funeral. A single kick sent Naruto rocketing to the surface. Booted feet alighted soundlessly upon the water, rendered solid once more. A quick tug at his pouch pulled Rani's doll forth once more. The waterproof leather had held despite all. Good. She wouldn't be much pleased if he lost this. Last chance to speak, Rani. He glared at the tiny doppelganger. We're about to knock your mom into next week. Mine mother the doll sprang to life in his grasp, tiny face writ with cold anger. What art thou doing? Aha she speaks me he glared at her. Where were you I could have used your help earlier. I was sleeping her good eye glowered right back. Explain thyself at once. Naruto did in no short terms, pausing long enough to steal a glance at Blade just to make certain he hadn't gone down in the interim. Did it Renala just throw a full moon on him no wait, he was up again somehow, pausing just long enough to knock back a drink from the flask at his side. Huh, seeing the flask of crimson tears was a pretty powerful thing. How was I to know you? And that's the long and short of it. He finished. You know this would have been easier if you just helped the first time. Oh Rani's doll planted all four hands on her little hips. And didst thou think to tell me thine destination? Naruto tried not to scoff as blade hurtled by. He really did. It emerged as a wince instead. No, she hissed. Then do not be angry with me for sleeping. His right eye twitched. Help now please. A dogged fellow aren't we fine fine. She set her tongue and cast a glance back to the battle, grimacing when Blade vaulted forward and knocked Renala sprawling. The carrying queen lost her crown in the scuffle that followed, sending those long dark tresses spinning free as her daughter looked on. But now the cat is out the bag, I cannot allow thee thy freedoms. Perform for me a service as recompense. Really? Bargaining now? Yeah, sure, I'll do whatever you want, just calm your mom down. Her open eye narrowed. I will have thee keep thine word when the time comes. Ranny, tell her you're alive already. She actually fidgeted in his palm, acting every bit a naughty child. Give me a moment to comport myself. I must prepare. Tis my mother, after all. Silence reigned supreme. Ronnie's doll raised her head, gathered herself, inhaled, and then, cease at once, mother I live. Ranala's whipped around at the projected voice, hair in disarray. Who dares? Rani made a noise rather akin to a whimper. Why did I agree to this? Naruto nudged her with a finger. Go on. I have faith in you. Was that a whine just now sounded like it? Some faith. Ranala still hadn't moved. She was looking at them now, glaring why red daggers at the two of them as though they were not but s of the earth. But she made no move to attack. Just as well, her reluctance gave Blade a chance to climb to his feet behind her. His head ed in a silent query. Naruto shook his own and frantically waved him down, unwilling to shatter the tentative peace. The half-wolf rolled his eyes, made a noise of discontent, but sheathed his blade nonetheless. I dare. Rani spoke warily into silence, know you not my voice. Renala crept closer. Trembling fingers reached out for the doll. Oh, little Rani. My dear daughter is that truly you. Yes, a little thrill passed through him. All's well that ends well. Rani pressed her advantage. Forgive me mine deception. If hurting you Tiwa is not something I desired. Her miniature stumbled over her words and he soon knew why. Mom, I have much to say and not much time with which to say it, but I would ask that you spare these too, they are very dear to me. Renala's face softened and then turned stern as stone. No, this is a trick she recoiled, warding her hands before her as though to stave off a spell. You dare use mine daughter's voice, imposter wretched fiend I will have thy head. Rani squeaked through her miniature, actually squeaked as she'd never done before. Naruto's sixth sense snared a new emotion. Fear. Dread rose from her in a dark cloud and he felt her resolve, cold and stern as the moon itself, falter in the face of such spite. It wasn't every day one had to stare down a maddened mother. He couldn't blame her. How would he feel if he stared down Kushina and heard such words even he would have flinched? Mother, please. A spellbolt sparked her way Naruto slapped it aside. I will not bandy words with a witless witch pretending to be mine kin Renala leered at them, face twisted with hideous anger, mired in madness once more. For thy insolence, I will hunt thee down and flay the flesh from thy bones you and your consort both. Naruto blinked. Consort say what now? Blade swore softly. Bugger, I see. This time the wince wasn't just Naruto's own. Tis a pity. Unlike him, Rani had never been the sort to take insults kindly, much less threats to her and hers. How your mind has diminished in mine absence. To be so filled with fear, unable to see, unable to hope, she exhaled in a slow, shuddering sigh. Truly, I pity thee. Her doll-like face flashed with hurt and then. So be it. When next she spoke her voice was colder than the void itself. If your tea will not see reason, then you shall be made to see. Somehow managing to look regal despite her size, the miniature looked to him anew. I will reach the academy soon. Distract my mother until then. Wear her down. Exhaust her, and he shall have thy victory. You have my leave to harm her if need be. The doll went deathly silent in his hand once more. He had no doubt as to how to how she felt in this moment. Naruto exhaled in a long-suffering sigh and stowed the puppet away. You cheeky little. Once more he felt his begin to boil, and not because of Rani. Rage festered and frothed in him like a frenzied flame, seeking escape. Maybe maybe he understood now. 
He could see why Ranny worked too hard to avoid her family. She didn't want to see them, what they had fallen to. To have your own mother threaten you was something worse than death. Ranala shivered as his gaze found hers. Do not look upon me, Knave. You have no right. And this woman had no right to be a mother. Not as she was now. Clenched knuckles barreled upright and caught her chin. What kind of parent are you? Do not speak to me such. Ranala scrambled upright on him, eyes wild. Gotcha. Ignoring Blade entirely, she raised her staff once more and in short order he found himself facing another stream of stars. This time he didn't hesitate. Warding one arm before his face, he waded in. Some were deflected but not all, he didn't care for those that did. His armor smoldered and spat sparks but Rani's design held, as did Eiji's metalwork. Those spells left his nice and warm, little more. Storming through her spell, he reached up, grabbed a handful of her robes, and hauled her down. No more his forehead smashed against hers, teeth bared. No more mad mothers, no more broken brothers, no more forsaken fathers, I won't have it, do you hear me? Not one more if this world's broken, I'll help her fix it starting now, I'll knock some sense into you. His fist kissed her face once, twice, thrice now. On fourth blow her robes tore, ripping her from her grasp to send her sprawling. A wise woman would have crawled away. Renala didn't. Not a jot. She snatched up her staff and flung herself at him like some mad beast. Another roundhouse was her reward. Even then she didn't hesitate. Kill you I'll kill you. What's wrong? With you his voice rose, hoarse with rage as he thrust her away. She's your daughter how can you treat her like that? Lies. Some might say it wasn't her fault. Renala was mad retreated so far inside herself that she'd lost all semblance of sanity. She'd simply stopped caring about the outside world, until he made her care. Now she threw her all at him. Torrents of light she conjured, gleaming stars all. Time and again her staff cut a circle before her and gave him a face full of magic, magic he ignored, burns and all. Summons swarmed forth, knights, wolves and even a giant. It didn't save her. He went left. Blade went right. Renala tried to counter their flanking maneuver. Truly, she did. She just wasn't quick enough. Even as she raised her scepter high, Naruto caught her wrist to yank it back down. Blade got a hold of her left arm and that was that. Together they wrestled both limbs behind her back and bound them. She fought them like a hellcat, spitting curses and imprecations all the while. Without her magic she was no true threat. It didn't make her vitriol any less potent. He felt the moment heart cracked. Ithisti's not fair. She wept. Rani reached at the academy not an hour later. Naruto knew it by the harsh crackle of ice in the distance, the sudden chill in the air, cries of combat echoing along the sullen snarl of sorceries as a certain sorceress mowed down all in her path. He winced despite himself and said a silent prayer for her once in his life. He didn't have the heart to go out there and prevent the slaughter. Not after the hell he'd just gone through. He'd already fought one carrying queen today, he'd no desire to fight another. At the end of the day, Rani had her mother's temper. Colder to rouse perhaps, but no less dangerous. Rani would explode into a sputtering denial if you pushed her hard enough sure, but she was more likely to sulk and scheme, to nurse a grudge against those she felt had wronged. That she wasn't doing so now and had chosen to actively involve herself in combat. Death would be a mercy compared to the sounds he was hearing out there. One did not mess with an angry demigod, weakened or otherwise. At least Blades got that crazy woman under lock and key. That crazy woman is Rani's mother. He chided Kirama for the slip. And she's not happy with her. Be nice. The doors had been left well open before they'd raged with Renala, as such Naruto heard Rani long before he saw her. He didn't raise his head. Didn't look at her. Even when her petite shadow fell over him he continued to fiddle with his armor. It had held well, but there was a dent in it he wanted to buff out and something he wanted to hide. Kirama's laughter didn't much help in the matter. There was something in her tone that set alarms wailing in his head. Was she already calling in that favor how unlike her? A faint scent filled his nose, faint reminding him of flowers and moonlight. He could feel her open eye gazing upon him, half-lidded, and for a fleeting moment he thought he felt heat creep up his back. He should have known better. Are you well? Are you well? Naruto most assuredly was not. Rani knew it at a glance, saw it by the way his back stiffened, beheld the slight twitch that shot through his shoulders. Something was bothering him. Perhaps it was his thoughts. Perhaps it was pain. Perhaps it was the melancholy of what he'd been forced to do. Who could say regardless, she liked IT not. Yup. Sure enough, he tried to yank his gambeson back on a bit too fast. She saw his finger spasm, noticed that he consciously kept his back to her as he sought to don his armor. Just cleaning up, you know nothing to see here. Rani's brow furrowed, good eye narrowing. Turn around, if you would. Her dear friend went still, but her gaze gave him not the chance to escape. Not this time. Rani, I'm fine. She began to tap her foot. With a put-upon sigh Naruto turned in his seat and stood to face her in his entirety. Rani immediately wished she hadn't. For in turning to present himself, he revealed his injuries. Her brow shot up into her hair and her hands moved to cover her mouth as she glimpsed the state of his. Really, he actually had the gall to grin at her, it looks worse than it is. Most of his upper torso was an angry red, smarting and stinging, as though he'd sat too long in the sun. She knew the source, of course. Renala had done this to him. No one else could hope to mark him such. Her own mother, driven to madness and lunacist, marked him. Whatever his words, those wounds would surely leave scars in their wake. She knew the like. A host of complicated emotions danced in her heart-stomping out rational thought. 
He would eventually recover, of course he would, yet magic had left its mark on him all the same. Her own mother, whom she would have to meet no, no not important right now. Those wounds her hands pushed against his, trying to force him down. Sit at once. I'm fine. He tried to laugh it off to no avail. You should see the other guy. He realized what he'd said, then. Burke. I mean. Her eye was cold at ice. Sit. Down. Naruto sat. Good. Now be still. Rani then sat herself in his lap. Her guard went still as stone, arms hanging just above her waist, as though uncertain where to put them. Rani preened a little at that. Was he uncomfortable tough? Did he have any idea how he'd worried her unlikely? It didn't change anything. She'd rushed over here at not great cost to herself. This doll's body was not meant for combat, and yet she'd pushed it through such rigors in her race to reach him. Expending such energy would force her take a long nap soon thereafter. A necessary sacrifice to make certain he remained safe. Doubtless, Eiji and Blade would chide her for it later. But did Naruto notice? No. Did he care? Nay, did he consider her feelings in the matter? Never. She'd had just about enough of him setting the pace, of herring off without considering the feelings of those around him. There had been a moment as she rushed here, an awful moment in which she feared he might fall. Naruto was no slouch in combat, but Mother was so very powerful and she knew she just knew he'd restrain himself for her sake. And he had. That he'd been wounded at all said as much. If he'd exerted himself fully from the beginning, surely he wouldn't be wounded. Rani, why are you looking at me like that? She ignored his words. What would she have done had he fallen? The thought chilled her. She which would miss him, the silly affable boy. No, perhaps that wasn't right. She would mourn his passing. His loss would hurt her. To watch him go into that good night with nary a word or even a good beano. She never wanted to experience that feeling again. That awful feeling of dread stealing up on her. Come what may she would avoid that at all costs. Upon looking into the matter it became clear what she must do. What she should have done, ages past. It terrified her, if only because there was a small increasingly larger part of herself that wanted to do this, that sought such for some time. She'd begun to crave it, and that worried her all the more. Never had she been one to feel such things in the past, let alone ponder such petty pleasures of the flesh. He'd ruined her, she realized. Sentiment had slipped back into her heart when she wasn't looking, and try though she might, she could not divest herself of it as she once had her flesh. As she was now, she couldn't even feel the warmth of his body against hers. How sad. Fool. She chided herself. Stop stalling. Thou art a demigod in soul, if no longer in flesh cast off thy hesitation and act. A little voice whined in her heart. T was not her fault she had next to experience in such nay none at all not a jot really this was all his fault. Folding all four hands in her lap, Rani looked up at Naruto beneath the brim of her hat. She absolutely glared. Thou truly art a dogged sort. The words escaped her anew. Whatever will I do with thee? Well, I'd appreciate if you didn't sling spells at me. The ghost of a smile touched her pale face. Not another word. She leaned forward before her heart could fail her and took his face between two of her hands. Her forehead kissed his. Be still. Sure, he laughed, but why are you? He was going to make this difficult, blast him. Enough she growled, but it lacked the bite of her previous remarks. The name of Rani the witch is already sullied by thee. She tried to tweak his nose with one of her hands, but exhausted as she was, she lacked the physical strength to do anything more than pinch him. So you will be still. I will brook no disobedience in this matter. All right, all right. There was again that silly sunny smile that made her heart flutter. I won't move for now. Promise. Good. She huffed but a little, scooting herself closer. Now then, dear warrior. Two arms wove round his shoulders, holding him fast. Clinging, really. I shall have thee take responsibility for thine actions. She ducked her head and pressed her lips to his. Rani fled soon thereafter. Run she did, feeling like some naughty child. Some might call her a coward for such. Perhaps she was. Tiwa's not her fault mustering up one's nerve was one thing, but to stay and linger in the afterglow of such was not her way. It never had been. She made her intentions clear the first move was hers. The second would be his. She hadn't fled out of cowardice. No, surely not. She had not run from his expression, nor for fear of what she might find there. She'd had time enough to watch his eyes widen, to see his lips part to speak before her nerve utterly failed her. Then she was away, herring off into the academy at speed before he could grab her and reel her back in. Oh, he'd shouted after her. Wait a second. But she had not waited. She couldn't. She absolutely did not dare. Naruto could have caught her. If he truly wished to hunt her down, nothing would stop him. Rani knew that. But shock or perhaps indecision had slowed him and so she'd made her escape. This was for the best, she told herself. If that blonde braggart wanted to find her later, then so be it. But for now she had a task to attend and other bonds to mend. She wasn't trying to distract her frazzled mind from that startled mean. Anyone fool who claimed otherwise would receive a cold spell to the face and a tongue lashing besides. Her feet carried her aimlessly at first, setting her to wander for a short time, blessed though it was. A pale hand traced the length of a pitted wall, lips pursing into a frown as she beheld the scars and stains there. Her nose curled in disgust. There had been violence here, too. Though much removed from the, the senseless violence of the shattering, Rhea Lucaria had its own woes. Violence that you caused. A nasty little voice hissed in the back of her head. Could you not have found another way? Pity stirred inside her at the reminder. 
pity and regret. She held fond if distant memories of the academy, faded though its glory was. Mother had brought her as a child to master her sorceries alongside Rikard and Radon. Ah, they'd not done much in the way of studying at first. They'd been little hellions, the three of them. Simpler times, those. Happier times. She'd once hurtled through these very halls with both brothers and Blade, slinging silly spells and giggling as outraged teachers gave chase. Father Radigan had caught them eventually. He'd admonish them in public, of course, only to wink and nudge them on when no one was looking. Remember, dear daughter. A large finger curled around her pinky, dwarfing her hand in his. Don't tell your mother. It's our little secret. Mother had encouraged them in her own way, rather than admonish them, she played ignorant and ever turned a blind eye to her antics. Yet she was always there for her when she fell or SCD her knee, quick to hold her close whenever she clutched at her skirts and sought attention. Oh, little Ranny, whatever will I do with you? Stifling a shiver, Ranny clenched her teeth and made her way to the lift. What grand those days were, days devoid of madness, when she was ignorant of her destiny, of the cruel fate looming over her family, before Godfrey had been hounded from the capital, before Radigan left them to become the next Elden Lord, before Mother's madness, before so many things. She could still see their ghosts in these hallowed halls, still hear them, if she listened. Sister, where are you going? Come back. How could you do such a thing? Don't leave us. I hate you, traitor. She steeled herself against them and kept moving, kept walking, ascending into the highest heights of the place she'd once called her second home. None dared to bar her path as she made the climb and took the lift to its highest reaches. Perhaps they sensed her mounting fury, perhaps they recognized their princess, who could say she cared not a jot for their thoughts. Glintstone sorcerers and broken soldiers, fools all. Hmm, perhaps not all fools. One, a knight bolder than the rest, stepped out the shadows to bar her path. Ranny quirked a brow, noting his curiously dented helm, but paid him little heed. Stand aside at once. I would speak with my mother. The man stiffened, Lady Ranny. Pa the cat was already out the bag thanks to Naruto. No point in hiding it. Indeed. She tilted her head, regarding him with her good eye. Tis I now, will you move, or shall I move you? Much to her surprise the man sputtered, knelt, and removed his helm. A thousand pardons, my lady I did not recognize you in that form. That voice hold a moment. She knew this one, though the memory was faint and furring, like fleeting moonlight. Silver hair, an eye patch over his right eye, a grizzled face worn by many battles. Moongrim, knight of Caria and mother's sworn sword. Once upon a time she'd sat on his knee and demanded stories from him. Stories he'd gladly given, grand tales of knights and dragons, heroes all. As she'd grown, he'd even gone so far as to sneak her storybooks despite the academy's embargo on such. A fond smile tugged at the corner of her mouth. Had he been protecting mother all this time? Suddenly the fish-shaped indent in Moongrim's helm made sense. Rani nearly laughed aloud. Honestly Naruto could be such a boy sometimes. My thanks, you have. She touched one hand to his shoulder. For thine exemplary service. My sword was lacking. The man made a choked noise and bowed his head further. Your mother, I failed her. You did not. Taking a page from her warrior's book, she fed his forehead. T was my sworn sword that bested you. He was acting under mine orders. Doubtless he wished to spare your life. As you say. As a tarnished, nay, as a carrion knight, her word was all he needed. Still, I did not know you lived. His head all but SCD the floor as he prostrated himself before her. Such failure is mine to bear and I will gladly atone with my life. Indignation sparked. You will do no such thing she would not seem him cast aside so easily, not now, not ever, and certainly for this. Your sword is needed to safeguard my mother in the coming battles. He will serve. A ponderous silence pushed itself between them. At length, the old knight dared to raise his head. If you will still have this old veteran, I shall. Randy paused to grant him a nod, little more. Then she walked past. Soon, the doors yawned wide for her once more. She eyed them warily, knowing full well who awaited her within. At first she had threw to bring Renala back with them but no. She did not trust Celevis. Better for mother to stay here than fall to his depredations. Sure enough she spied her within at the hallway's end, cradling that amber egg to her bosom. She didn't dare approach. Not yet. Even devoid of her crown and thusly bound, Renala of the full moon was a dangerous woman. Naruto and Blade had gone through great effort to restrain rather than harm her, but for a wild moment Rani almost wished they'd simply slain her outright. To live as a shadow of oneself, there could be no greater shame, says the girl possessing a doll. A cursed guilt out out of her head Rani grabbed the voice with all four hands and sought to strangle it, only for it to slip through her fingers and burrow deep into her heart. She stomped a foot, then winced when her leg cracked. She wanted to scream. It was this place. Tiwa stirring up memories, feelings best forgotten. Renala raised her head suddenly, swiftly. Too swiftly. Across the distance, their eyes met. I see you. Rani reared back and hid with a curse, heart hitching in her. Laughter greeted her. Come, child. The madwoman crooned. I shan't bite. It sounded so much like the woman Renala once was. Rani almost wanted to hapino no hope hope only led to fear. Fear, which in turn, boiled into anger. Anger became hate. Hate, suffering. And suffering led to the same blind, why madness, which afflicted her mother. She would not falter. She would not. Rani peeked through the gap, feeling every bit a little girl again. Mama. She chastised herself for the slip immediately, but it was too late to take the words back. Closer, now. 
Renala crooked a pale hand toward her, a hint of longing lurking in her words. It's so dark. Let me have a proper look at you. Lest she ran he wanted to run. To fly, flee from this place and never return. And what would that avail her nothing? Nay, she had to face her. This wasn't something she could flee from. Mother was mad. This was not something that could be cured so easily, not even by Naruto's hand. Perhaps if he were stronger he might be able to heal her mind as he had her body. But alas, he lacked such power. It fell the more conventional means to see her restored which. She needed her mother. She had to see her, had to speak to her, face to face. Even if things went wrong. Even if it hurt. An open palm planted itself between her shoulders to propel her forward. Rani stumbled, yanked down her hat to hide her face and spun, knowing full well who she'd find there. Sure enough, Naruto beamed back at her, one arm still extended. Last at all he'd caught up and he didn't look the least bit discomfited with her and why was her heart beating so fast she didn't even have one. What are you waiting for he made a shooing motion with his right hand. You can do this. Hey, she could not she'd changed her mind this was an awful idea. Her eyes snapped down. Considered. Narrowed. She ain't gonna hurt ya. Mistaking her silence for something else, the blonde barreled on. I can sense it much. Blades just down the hall, too. If you need us, shout. He looked like wanted to lay a hand on her head, but he flushed suddenly and pulled back. I believe in you. You know his eyes flitted away from hers as he scratched the back of his skull. Go on. You got this. Randy released her hold upon her hat with a huff. So be it. I shan't suffer this indignity alone. They got a blink out of him. Eh? She surged forward and struck like a serpent, seizing the fingers of his right palm in hers. Twin hands clamped down with intent, held fast and then she was moving, walking, marching, all but running, not giving him time to think, let alone react as she dragged him in after her. Oh, he tried to tug back, but it was too late. Judging by the noise she made, Renala had seen him. What are you doing? Rani glared at him over her shoulder. Did I stutter? This is a bad idea, he flailed, to no avail, unwilling to use his full strength for fear of harming her. Very bad idea. Just as well, too, because Rani ignored him wholeheartedly. Only five steps now, and they were upon her. Hello, mother. Renala looked at her for a long, ponderous moment. Rani stiffened, senses straining, ready to cast a barrier at the slightest provocation. She would not be caught unawares. The very moment she senses even the tiniest swell of mana she would deploy countermeasures. Without her staff though she might be, Renala was not one to be trifled with lightly. No doubt she would rant and rage at her, curse her, hurl all manner of imprecations at her as she raved in her lunacy. Rani, why was her face in her mother's bosom why was Naruto there too, for that matter? Let me have a look at you. Renala drew back, holding her at arm's length. Are you all right? Have you been eating well? Did you shrink? She didn't wait for an answer to any of those questions before yanking them both back into her embrace one more. Why? But you seem shorter than I remember. Wherever have you been hiding? Shame burned her ears. Tiwa's not by choice and there's much to tell. An understatement? That. Renala still wasn't well. Still, surely this was an improvement. She wasn't attacking them. But why was she being so friendly? And who is this darling boy? Then is he your consort mother's gaze swept to Naruto now, who for the first time, froze like a deer under the moonlight. He seems nice. As the boy sputtered Rani once more found her have you given thought to children with him I'm sure they'd be. Naruto's tan face turned seven shades of startled scarlet. Kids. Rani covered her face with all four hands. Mama. Wait. She was acting as if this was her first time seeing Naruto. That didn't make sense. Yeah was this not better she wasn't attacking them. Even if she wasn't entirely there, this was a far cry from the raving rage she'd visited upon them prior. Speaking of which, have you seen your brothers Renala touched a hand to her face, glanced about, then frowned when she found nothing. Why? But they've made themselves scarce of late. She cast her gaze about the empty library, searching in vain. Your dear father seems to be hiding as well. She shifted her legs beneath her, causing her shackles to clink softly. T would seem he lost the key to these. Naruto hissed out of breath. Ugh, no. We put those on you, for your own safety. Didst thou Renala tilted her head. But this is the first time we've met. Rani froze. Understanding dawned and with it, Rani's world went darker than the cold moon she'd learned to fear. It all made a twisted sort of sense now. This was worse than she'd thought. Far worse, to have forgotten such things outright, nay, to deny them with such a simple smile on her face only one thing could have caused such. One could not call it selective amnesia at that, for her emotions burned true. And yet, she'd simply forgotten much of what had transpired her. To even think of such, horror curdled within her, souring her every thought like rotten milk. Had she willingly used Radigan's golden egg upon herself, to try and strip away her trauma, only to break herself even more the grim art of reincarnation was seldom perfect, even for mother. To even attempt the right alone was a process fraught with peril. She'd seen the sweetings her mother so favored, broken girls all, able to do little more than crawl and babble nursery rhymes. To her own eyes mother, unclouded now, Renala looked younger. Not by much, but noticeable enough to catch the eye. Didst thou rebirth thyself? Nay. Renala's response was just a touch too quick. Whatever do you mean? Mother, father's egg is in your arms. She stepped forward, even as the older woman shrank back. Do you deny it? Do you mean this she looked down, still clutching her egg? I wonder from whence it came such a curious thing. 
so warm. Evidently that was enough for Naruto, because he stepped forward, pulled out of Rani's grasp and grabbed a fistful of Renala's robes. A quick tug brought her down. His marked hand came up, alighting upon Mother's cheek. The other joined it, holding fast. His forehead touched hers. It's okay. His words were a whisper as he closed his eyes. You don't have to pretend, not for our sake. The rebirthing didn't work, did it let it out. Her smile cracked, a hairline fissure etching across her mask. I haven't a clue what you mean. Don't you? He didn't budge the stubborn sod. Aren't you happy to see Rani again? Of course I am. You nave Renala snapped back think not Aya. Naruto leaned back, eyes narrow and intent. Gotcha. Rani gingerly stepped in to take his place. I'm sorry, mother. She laid a trembling palm on her arm. For everything. All of it. Renala's facade continued to crumble. Still she clung on for another second. Then she broke. This time, Rani didn't try to dodge so that followed. Slim arms wrapped tight around her as her mother wailed. Little Rani how I miss thee. Naruto slept well. Perhaps too well some might say, because he couldn't recall falling into bed in the first place. Meh, semantics. He was comfortable and nothing short of an earthquake was going to move him. Indeed the moment he awoke, his body's immediate instinct was to yawn, cuddle closer to Rani, bury his head in her hair and go right back to sleep. Wait a minute. Blue eye snapped open with a start, suddenly and intimately aware of three very important factors. The first being the quartet of slender arms enfolding him, those pale fingers clasped tight behind his back. Of the second, her slim figure nestled against him. Third, her body pleasantly cool to the touch, even through those snow-white robes. He barely even heard the creak of her joints, the faint sound as she shifted in her slumber. She felt real and solid and whole, despite her fragile form. His heart skipped a beat. Against his better judgment, he looked down. Rani, mercifully, she remained sound asleep. Thank the sage for small mercies. All right, his brain bleated, don't panic. There's probably a perfectly reasonable explanation for this. He just had to raise his hands, create a clone, then use a good old-fashioned substitution jutsu. She'd be none the wiser for it. Slowly now, carefully, wouldn't do to wake her. The moment he twitched, her left eye fluttered open. Naruto didn't dare move. Neither did she. Something had to give eventually. Much to his surprise it was her. Rani ducked her head. Finally awake, are thee. Me he scoffed at that, couldn't help himself. You woke up after I did and how did we get here? Tis no fault of mine. She pressed her forehead to his, bringing with it pleasant chill. Be still. You had a fever. You've only just recovered. That explained a nothing at all I do I did strange, he didn't remember falling ill in the first place. Hirama. You got burned by Renala, remember a jaw-popping yawn followed hot on the heels of that reminder. Wasn't as bad as she makes it sound, but you were pretty out of it by the end there. Apparently injuries inflicted by magic don't heal as quickly, hence the fever. Your little witch has been using her spells to keep you cool. She doesn't belong to me. My mistake. You're clearly hers. He sputtered indignantly, to no avail. Oi, maybe you'll remember to dodge next time and not get hit, eh? You've been abed for the last three days, but you began to recover broke last night. Rani continued at length, stifling his retort. I cannot warm my bed as I am now, but I can at least hold thine body and help thee slumber. I appreciate it. What else could he say? They lay in silence for a while longer, neither willing to speak. Rani caved thirty seconds in and poked him. You're still tense. Tell me what ails thee at once. He shouldn't have. If he wasn't half asleep or near delirious, he never would have worked up the nerve. You kissed me. She hung her head at that, and lacking her hat, instead hid her expression in her voluminous hair. Yes, her voice sounded tiny. Small. Does that bother thee? Naruto took a moment to ponder those words. Did it bother him he already knew the answer. Not a jot, as Rani was so fond of saying. He'd never really gotten to know a girl before, not like he knew her. Sure, she could be stubborn and stuffy, even a bit huffy if you teased her too much. She might even appear cold to the untrained eye. But once you got past that frigid demeanor, once you cracked her icy shell she was so very warm. She trusted few, and loved even less, but for those she did, she'd move heaven and earth to help you. So, did her attention bother him? Not at all. He knew he'd said the words aloud when she gasped. Right then, this was venturing into unknown territory he wasn't prepared for. Find a new heading. So what's eating you? Then he quickly changed tact before she could call him on it. You seem pretty stressed yourself. She gave him a flat look. There is no need to concern myself with my woes. Rani, fine fine. She made an irritated noise, but didn't let go of him. Tis this place. The academy is full of ghosts and old memories for me. Just last night I thought I saw Godwin. Naruto wrinkled his nose. Who? Her face closed down. Another time, perhaps. He blew out a long-suffering sigh. Another secret, you mean? Yes. The frankness of her admission didn't surprise him. Of a darker sort. He was mine kin and two killed him. The admission seemed to take something from her. Not intentionally perhaps, but my actions led to his death. She paused for a long moment, steeled herself, then continued. And indirectly, the shattering that followed. Oh, that that was a lot to unpack. Art thou satisfied now she didn't look at him, much to his chagrin. I am a foul and rotten witch. If thou wish to divest thyself of my services, I would understand. Not a chance not happening this Godwin guided you want him dead. Rani's hands tightened around him, digging into his back. Nay, if it were not him, another would have died that night. He pressed her. Did you take pleasure in his death? 
Of course not, who do you take me for? Then I'm sure he'd understand. Ranny bit her lip, and he knew. He's not dead, is he? Notice such. She squirmed a little in his arms, but now it was he who held her, refusing to let her escape. You must understand, the night of the Black Knives did not go entirely as planned. In the moment that I slew mine own Empyrean flesh and cast it away, so too did Godwin die as it were. I escaped my body. My soul survived. There it was, a bite of cold anger in her words, that hint of self-loathing. Godwin's did not. His spirit is gone, but his flesh yet lives. I had hoped that he would go to his rest, not linger on as he has. A bit difficult to wrap his head around, but he could understand it, at least in theory. So he's alive then. Ranny's knee smacked his, only relenting when Edidian let go. I suppose one might see it that way. He ran a hand down the small of her back. You gonna tell me where he is? She shook her head. His right eye twitched. Ran right on the eye. Do not drag out my name in such a mater she glared up at him hotly, lone eye blazing in the low light. I would not have you exposed to that thing, to the abomination he has become. To go near Godwin as he is now would have he corrupted by death itself, just like that stubborn dragon Fortisax I will not of it I won't. Her words rattled him. Dragon no, never mind that. Someone already tried, and failed. She set her tongue at him. Look, I ain't gonna die. You misunderstand. She shook a little against him. There are worse things in this world than death. Naruto stilled, retort withering on his tongue. Renala and Radon. One lost to the madness of her own mind, the other festering with scarlet rot. Radigan vanished to parts unknown. Rikert and Godwin made monsters by substances well beyond their control. And poor Rani shackled to the body of a doll, unable to truly experience the world in its entirety. Yes, there were worse things than death. He pressed his head into her shoulder, unable to ignore the faint hitch in her breath. Fair, he allowed. But I ain't got a clue what to do next. Even now the admission rattled him a little. Renala was still not quite right in the head, but she was better than before. She wouldn't attack them. Who did that leave then Rikard raid on raid again maybe Godwin if he pulled out a miracle he was terrified of breaking Rani, both her body and her heart. Some of his anxiety must have shown through because Rani tugged at him. I would ask you to wait. Allow Blade and I to recover. You know I can't do that. He couldn't wait. Not when he knew others were suffering. Your family's hurting people. You said yourself, you don't know where your old man ran off to. Maybe he's safe somewhere. That doesn't change the fact that Rikard and Radon are hurting others. That Anne will a pain grimace stole across his features as he remembered the grisly details Selavis had given him. Eating people. Tis no fault of Radon. Ranny ran a fractured hand across his. He was a noble warrior, once. Honorable to a fault. He would have liked you, I think. Before Melenia ruined him with the rot. Wait, wait, you have a sister, too. Half-sister. She spat. A stubborn and prideful wretch who would sooner corrupt an entire continent than admit defeat. Sounds like me and my fists need to have word with her. Pa, she barked a bitter laugh at his remark and curled into him. T would certainly be amusing. I do not wish to kill mine kin, but what's done is done. If death is the only release we can grant them then so be it. But I tire of this. I would return to mine slumber. She rolled away from him, her back to his, only to scoot closer. She made no move to escape. When she finally spoke, Naruto found he had to strain to hear her. Might I ask you to hold me, just for a little while? Heat rose to his cheeks. How could he say no? Sure thing. Whatever you want. Sleep came quickly. How are you feeling? Blade groaned and raised a trembling arm from where he lay. Like death warmed over. Hey. A rueful smile tugged at Naruto's mouth as he plunked down in a chair. Look like it, too. Or maybe that's just your ugly mug. You're lucky I can't get up. Just you wait. I'll tear strips out your hide once I can walk again. He couldn't help but chuckle at that. Promises, promises. Sprawled across no less than three conjoined cots, the half-wolf didn't look much pleased to be out of his armor, much less a bed and wrapped in bandages. He'd acquitted himself well against Renala, a stubborn warrior through and through, but he'd taken his fair share of wounds all the same. He wouldn't be up and about for a while yet. How's she doing? She's better. Naruto fought down a yawn. Still sleeping, though. Managed to swap myself with a clone and wriggle away. And Lady Renala. He grimaced at the reminder. They cried for a bit last I saw him, but I think they'll be all right. Rani's shadow made a noise that might have been a laugh, of perhaps a gravely grunt. Hard to tell. Still, even with his wounds, his mind stood sharp as ever. You're wearing your armor. His head inclined a fraction of an inch. Notice that, did you? Rani's tuckered out. She expended an awful lot of energy to get here quick as she did, and that's taken a toll on her. When he saw his pensive expression, he barked a laugh. Don't worry, she'll be right as rain in a few days but you're not going to wait that long, are you? We don't have a few days, Blade. Naruto steepled his fingers and laid his chin atop them. You of all people know that. I, his head fell back to the pillows. I doubt Radon will much mind as he is now. And those recusants you told me about you said you saw a scout near here. She's not around anymore. Moongram checked. And what do you think that means? Blade opened his mouth to retort. Closed it. Blessed. That's a big fish you're going after. I'm in no shape to fight, mate. Not for long. I know. I healed you as best I could. And I appreciate it. A hand waved loosely, unable to reach him. If not for you I'd be laid out for months rather than of a few days. The silence was his answer. You know, I don't much like the idea of you doing this alone. Blade rumbled. Don't do anything foolish out there. Ranny loves you, I think. 
She'll cry if you die. Naruto's throat closed, strangling any crass reply he might have given in kind. Blade chortled. Speechless or we never thought I'd see the day. Not another word. Naruto grumbled. I'll bite you. Probably how she likes it. B-L-A-I-D-D. And where art thou going? Naruto paused mid-step, one foot through the door. Of all the people he'd expected to challenge him, he'd not expected this. Well, he pivoted, shouldering his pack. I didn't think you would leave your library. Dear boy, Rinala scoffed as she stepped out the shadows to loom over him. I am mad, not paralyzed. His gaze drifted to her right hand, nothing a rather unfamiliar weapon there. Rinala had a new staff, something forged of purest green crystal. He could feel her mana swelling, even now. No surprise there. That awful rebirth, though it had failed to strip her memories away as intended, had left her body both younger and far stronger than before. She stood before him now in her prime, just as she had stood before Raidig and on that fateful day, ready to lash out at the slightest provocation. Unlike him, Naruto stand his ground. He won a rematch. He saw her consider it. And then, my daughter intends to court thee. Hey, he blinked, somewhat taken aback. That's an odd way of saying Rani likes me. You don't seem to understand. Rinala ground her teeth, almost ready to call him a knave again, then swallowed the word. Her smile was bright, a light to burn through her madness, if only for a moment. When I say courtship, I mean my daughter intends to have thee as her husband come the end of this. His eyes widened and so too did hers narrow. Tis a battle not even Queen Marika herself, nor the greater will shall save thee from. Naruto's jaw set open. Biwa. Then his temper sparked. Greater will Marika what good were they? Screw them if the greater will and this queen would let the world fall apart like this, then why should I care what they think he slashed a hand back, reaching for the hound's fang on his back. Firm fingers curled around the hilt, but he didn't draw it. I say it's time to for a change. Huh. He wasn't prepared for her laughter. Renala bent double, one hand flying to her mouth as her shoulders shook, body physically convulsing with mirth. Naruto found himself balking at her, unsure what to make of such a sordid display. This madwoman, this once former queen, giggled herself silly. She laughed until she cried, then laughed some more, shuddering until she was spent. Naruto dared to edge forward. You, okay there. I aim well enough. She straightened slowly, wiping a lonely tear from the corner of her eye. You truly are like mine husband and yet more than he ever was. Another giggle shook her shoulders before she managed to master herself. How he would have hated you. He would have been a heretic in his eyes. Something hardened in his heart of hearts and he found himself lifting his chin in mulish defiance once more. If I'm a heretic for trying to do right by Rani in this world, then so be it. Are you prepared to sully thyself for her? The Queen of Caria pursed her lips in a thin line and tilted her head, dark tresses obscuring her right eye. It reminded him so much of Rani. To why thy hands? A lifetime ago, he would have said no. Now hindsight was a remarkable thing. He'd killed before in the past, or fought with intention to kill. If that was what it took, I'll do what I have to do. He said at last, raising his head to glare wide blue daggers at the woman Rani once called mother. No more, no less. Renala's gaze went half-lidded. She stalked forward. Naruto tensed, ready to dodge away. Pale palms seized his face. Warm lips alighted upon his forehead. His world froze. Ah, thou would that I had met thee an age ago. As he stood there aghast, Renala drew back, gazing longingly at him. How I would have loved ye, but no, your heart belongs to my daughter now. A hand came down to pat his head, as a mother might her wayward son. Be good to little Rani. Make the journey. Fight in her stead, where she cannot. Let them call your defiance blasphemy. It matters not. Stand. Rise. Fight. Do what you feel is right. Oi, he swallowed thickly, unprepared for the sudden surge of emotion. Did you just give me your blessing too? Now go forth, brave warrior. Rinala spoke over him, drowning his words out. Prove then worth, make yourself worthy of my daughter's hand. And know this, if you betray her. Her staff fed out and perched under his chin, glintstone blazing blue. I will feed thee thine own heart. Don't have to tell me twice. I ain't gonna turn on her. Not for nothing. It was enough for her. Rinala stepped aside. Off he went. A golden flash heralded his arrival. Eiji looked up from his worn tome, helm clinking as he raised his gaze to meet the newcomer. He knew who it was, of course. Ever lacking subtlety, this one. Sure enough he found Naruto standing before him, body shining brighter than the earth tree itself, though such a thought was blasphemy. Such a curious ability. The irony was not lost on him. For if Lady Rani sought the age of the stars and moon, then the young man before him made one dwell on a different era. The age of the sun. The moon and the sun. Night and day. One could not exist without the other. What an amusing and fitting twist of fate. Ah, but to business. How can I help, my good fellow? I need a weapon. Naruto planted a fist on his hip, uncaring as the old troll took up his hammer once more. Something durable, something strong enough that it won't break when I use it. He laid the hound's fang on the anvil before him with a solemn expression. This is good and all, but it'll snap if I swing full force. I need something better. Fireproof, too. The old giant quirked a graying brow. Something to slay a serpent, perhaps. The silence was his answer, and amusing it was. How did you? Come now, I'm old, not senile. I've just a thing. Rani woke some time later. She could no longer feel warmth, but she still noticed the absence of a weight curled around her and the faint peace that came with it. Sitting up only confirmed her mounting dread, a cursory glance all the more so. Sure enough, she found herself alone, not a hint of him to be seen. 
fool of a boy. Where did he go this time? Her words trailed off as she beheld the note on her pillow, written in loose, familiar scrawl. I'm headed to the Volcano Manor. See you in three days. Please don't be mad at me. I'm doing this for you. Don't worry, it'll all work out. Naruto. Rikard. He was going after Rikard, though whether to slay or save him she knew not. The note crumpled in her grasp. He didn't go there alone. Surely not. Of course he had. She smacked a hand into her pillow and tried to stand, only for her legs to buckle. Blast it all. She wasn't recovered enough. T was not fair. She wished she could do more. She wished she could feel him. She wanted to run her hands through his hair. To experience his hands as they held her, to breathe in his scent, to hear him cry her name as she wrote him unto blessed release. The floodgates were open now, the dam burst. All the emotions she had striven to conceal and control and corral were set free and there was not she could do a boot hit. She couldn't banish them, no matter how much she tried. Worse, she knew she could have these things in a heartbeat. She had but to ask. Or rather, she should have. With both his skill and ring in hand, he could craft her a body true, and blessed as her consort forevermore. It would be so easy. She had but to reach out to her miniature doll she knew he still had it and ask for such. He might yet turn around, and then, rejuvenated, she could join him. And yet she couldn't do it. Not yet. No matter how she might wish it so. To do so now, with her two fingers still alive and their baleful shadows yet active, would be her ruin. They would surely notice such an ascension. Once they did, they'd send everything they had at her. Assassins would be the least of her worries. They'd send their tarnished, their leal hounds. There it would undo everything she had worked for. Her new form might even be safe from their influence semite. But if it wasn't, he would bind her. Take her. Use her. No, she couldn't do it. Caught between desire and duty, she snarled into her pillow. You'd best come back alive. Baruto took one look at the volcano manor and sighed. I've got a bad feeling about this. He tugged up his cloak to hide his face and stalked down the rise. The things we do for love. The volcano manor welcomed Naruto with open arms. A lie here, a fib there, and he was in. All too easy. Even this far in the north, in the shadow of the Ur tree, Rani's name opened doors for him. One look at the carrying crest on his armor and the tiny doll in his hand had Tanith all too happy to play hostess. Downright giddy some might say. She'd fed him the finest food and drink none of which were poisoned, remarkably, and provided him room for the night. She seemed determined to play her part, if nothing else. Her faithful knight decidedly less so. Even now he could feel the crucible knight watching him like a grim hawk as he sat across from her mistress. Sword brandished, point first into the floor, ready to pounce at the slightest sign of danger. She would defend Tanith to the last. He could respect such loyalty, flawed though it was. Good for her. It wouldn't make of difference. Ah, but little Miss High Horse was speaking and he must attend for now. Lord Reichard has ever had great faith in his dear sister. As he looked on, Lady Tanith folded both hands in her lap, the very picture of decorum, mask reflecting nothing. He will be most pleased to learn of her survival. Her head tilted just so, a note of intrigue threading its way into her words. When will she be coming to the matter? Naruto fought down a tiny twitch. Never, if I have anything to say about it. Steady, now. Don't show your hand. I know, I know. If this Reichard was half the monster Rani claimed he was, then he wouldn't be letting her anywhere near him. The only thing Reichard would be meeting was his fist, maybe Kurama if he really riled him up. He wouldn't be lingering here long, just enough to get a sense of there the lord of the manor was hiding. In Thenwell, he schooled his face into a mask not unlike Tanit's own and buried his anger. Buried it deep. Outwardly he plastered a simpering smile to his face and continued to play the part. She's eager to see him again, he leaned forward, lowering his voice in a faux whisper, but her body doesn't allow her to travel for extended periods of time. Such are her limits. You understand, of course. She sent me a head top of the way, as it were. Certainly, her head bobbed in agreement. We are, all of us, diminished by the shattering. Doubtless she did what she must to survive. You are of similar stock, are you not? His brow furrowed. I'm afraid I don't follow. You seek a new age, just as we do. Tanith sat just a bit straighter in her chair, yet for all that he felt something coiled deep inside her. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. It only makes sense to join forces in our rise against the Ur tree. Naruto didn't trust himself to words and nodded instead. Credit where it was due, the mistress of the manor betrayed nothing, not even a hint of a smile. Her words almost masked the madness simmering beneath her skin. Almost. He read the currents of her emotions all the same. She actually thought she had the upper hand here. Adorable. Made him want to take her over his knee and spank her until she squealed. He wouldn't be a recusant. He'd sooner eat his own heart than kill innocent tarnish that were just trying to get by. Will you not have an audience with our lord she asked suddenly. I'm sure he would be delighted to welcome you in your lady's stead. Oh, no, 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 no. He wasn't walking into that trap until he was ready. Maybe later, once I've settled in. Fair. She allowed. I'm sure the rest of the manor is eager to meet you. His smile was all teeth. I'm sure. You're not here to join our family, are you? Nope. Such an innocent inquiry. And yet for all that, Raya didn't even flinch when he gave her his answer. She continued to follow him, lingering after him like a lost puppy. Naruto almost laughed at it all. Were it not for his own ironclad self-control, he might well have. Instead he kept his eyes fixed firmly ahead as he weaved his way through the darkened hall. To look back now would expose him to more of those ghastly snails and their poison. 
They couldn't harm him, but he'd gotten plenty of their gunk on his armor already thanks to the cramped corridors. Granny would have his hide if he came back to her smelling like a grave. He could imagine it now. What is that wretched scent to the baths with you do not enter mine chambers until thou art clean? The ghost of a smile touched his lips. It gave him the strength to persevere, even in the face of this latest challenge. Then why are you here? Right, adorable little snake girl. Almost forgot about her. He wasn't fooled by her disguise. If she wanted to walk about as a human, that was fine with him. Far be it from him to question a simple soul like her. For all intensive purposes, Raya Waspier. More than the other residents of the manor, at least. She had her own reasons for being here, but he sensed doubts in her, belief that her family was doing good clashing against some uglier, darker secret. Yet for all that, she didn't have a hint of madness or mischief about her. She didn't cower before him like that Dialos fellow, and she certainly didn't simper as Patches did. Likewise, her gentle curiosity and tentative questions were a far cry from the gruff stoicism offered by Bernal, whom he resolved to deal with at the first opportunity. That one was struck him as vengeful. Best put him down fast and hard when the time came. On your left. A hound knight lunged at them out the dark, claws bared as it brayed a challenge. Raya yelped and ducked behind him. Naruto caught the mad dog by the skull, spun, and without missing a beat, levered it into a wall. Spattered the stones. A body hit the floor. Runes flooded into him. He kept walking, feigning indifference as she scampered after him. He'd expected if the casual display of violence to spook her, but she kept pace with him regardless. Let's just say I'm gainfully employed at the moment. He risked a quick glance back at her. Is there a reason you followed me? Her eyes flashed bright in the dark, giving him a hint of her true form. You're here for Lord Rikard, aren't you? No point fibbing about it now, deep as they were. I am. You gonna stop me? Please don't, he willed at her. Don't make me fight you. My mother once ate. The mousy little blonde paused, swallowed, wrung her hands, then comported herself at last. That I was the daughter of a noble lineage, of a great king. Her eyes held his in the low light intently. It wasn't a lie, but neither was it the truth. My father was a great man in the past. Realization dawned. Rikard's your old man, isn't he? Raya nodded stiffly. Well, today was just dropping all sorts of bombshells, wasn't. That's rough. Naruto ran a hand through his hair, paused, took a left, then chose a set of stairs to ascend in the gloom. How'd you find out? Her light footsteps echoed after him. A dear friend of mine looked into the matter for me. He saw light ahead. What happened to this friend of yours? She was granted an audience with my father. Raya hung her head. She did not return. I'm so sorry. Don't be. Her voice warbled a little behind him, just a tad, just a touch, but it was enough. He knew if he looked back, he would see tears in her eyes. They were very kind to me. Her voice peaked a little in frustration he didn't understand. I thought my talisman would bring them good luck but I was mistaken. In my desire to help them, I unwittingly hastened their own death. A faint scuffling sound reached his ears as she rubbed her face. Still, I believe they would have liked me to continue their work. And what work is that? A thread of steel wove its way into her words, bringing an end to this madness. Together they emerged into an elegant church festooned with crimson candles and elegant pews hewn of oak. A glimmering point of grace awaited them on the dusty red carpet without. It burst into brilliance at his touch but he paid it little heed. His eyes were already fixed on the doors ahead. Or rather, what lay beyond. Far beyond. Do you feel that? Naruto almost wished he couldn't. He sensed it. Something old. Tainted. A hint of golden grace, of noble intentions corrupted into arrogance and avarice. A mass of screaming souls deep beneath the earth, crying out for release. If he could feel it this strongly, experience it at such a distance as shuddered to think what it would be like up close. All the more reason to put it to rest, then. Raya tugged at his sleeve. You said you were Lady Rani's consort. Heat speared into his face as he looked away. Might as well be. Would she allow something like this? No. A thought struck him, then. Wait. He paused. Counted on his fingers. Hold on. If I'm pretty much marrying Rani and Rikard's your dad. Raya perked up, near giddy in her exuberance. I have an uncle. Naruto reared back, eyes bulging. I have a niece. Someone laughed first. He wasn't sure who. Well, this is delightful. Raya clapped her hands together and laid them against her cheek with a giggle. The smile that followed nearly stopped his heart. I always wanted an uncle. You might have more than that. He couldn't quite keep the smile from his face. That makes Rani your aunt. Prime teasing material there. He'd have weeks worth of fun. I'm sure she'd be thrilled to know she has a niece. Now Raya's grin was truly something to behold. Why, you're right I never thought of it like that. And I'm sure Rinala's gonna love having a granddaughter. Her eyes widened. Hiram aside. Now you've done it. I have a grandmother, too this is wonderful I must tell everyone I'm so haham. Her exuberance faded a moment later as she recalled the task at hand. She coughed into a fist, flushing fiercely. You'll stop father, won't you mother won't thank you for it, but it needs to be done. Truly, it does. I will. He'd intended to, from the very beginning. This place is full of monsters and madmen. It should be burnt down. A long pause followed his words. And then, do you consider me a monster, uncle? Naruto fought down a pleasant shiver. All right, that was going to take some getting used to. More than a little. But how could one refuse such a pure child? Not you. You're a little cinnamon roll. Naruto blew out in quick breath. He knew no one was looking, that it was just the two of them in this chapel. He flushed anyway. Then he stepped in. Raya didn't try to escape. 
he couldn't be sure whether she trusted him implicitly or if she simply knew better than to try and escape. Regardless, she didn't run. Her sole response was to stiffen, spine straightening as he drew her into a brisk embrace. Oh, her gasp was muffled against his. You're quite warm. This feels quite pleasant, actually. No one's ever held me quite like this before. I'm going to have a spoiled niece, aren't I? He drew back and patted her head. Stay here. I'll be back. You're going to face him alone. I am. He grunted. You're going to stay here, safe and sound. Before she could protest, he thrust the doors open and leaped down into hell. He found the serpent easily enough, cutting a swat through all manner of monsters and madmen led him to his final destination within the hour. Even so, nothing could have prepared him for what he found within that chamber. A writhing mass of coiled scales writhed over a pit of lava as large as it was grotesque. It didn't even notice them. If anything it looked to be sleeping. That is a big snake. Meh. Naruto fought down a shiver and gripped his right arm. I've seen bigger. His partner picked up on his unease quickly. You all right? He shuddered. Just bad memories. He'd been eaten by a serpent once before. Not something he was keen on reliving. And he wouldn't, if he had anything to say about it. Back then he scarcely had a scrap of power to his name, he'd escaped certain death by only the narrowest of margins. A strange rocky outcropping caught his eyes. No, not a statue at all. It was the remains of a man, holding a spear. He hefted it and felt the power within. Well, hello there. Something crunched underfoot. Naruto looked down, saw the skulls etched into the hardened floor, felt the bones under his boots. Something deep inside him recoiled. He'd expected to find the dead here, but never in such an abundance. Kurama cursed and he joined him a moment later as the revelation hit. This wasn't a chamber at all. This was a tomb. These were people. Countless souls had been slain here, dying by the hundreds. Mounds of them, wailing souls, clutching at one another in their last moments, flesh long since hardened into stone. It didn't end there, either. Much to his horror, realized that the hardened pillars around him weren't pillars at all, but the calcified remains of those who'd tried to climb away from this thing in their final moments. By comparison the gaudy chandelier strung high only made the scene even more eerie. His gorge rose anew. How many lives had been lost here, how many had gone unknowingly to their deaths. Not just Raya's companion, but all these tarnished he devoured. Hello, rumbling snarl tore out of him. R-Y-K-A-R-D. The snake jerked awake. Naruto stormed to meet it, spear in hand. Come on then, you big bastard take me to your boss. The battle that followed could barely be called such. The serpent lunged, the spear sang in his hands once in his hands, skewering it through the skull. The serpent fell. Wake up, you slimy bastard he planted a golden boot in the gravel and glared up at the serpent. I know you're in there. He thought he knew what to expect. He did not, because the serpent twitched. That wide head twitched backward, dragged by some unseen force. Its body pivoted, head still dangling. And he saw it. A face on the back of its slender body, growing more and more pronounced with each passing moment. A visage formed entirely from scales, yet still humanoid nonetheless. HRRM. Golden eyes opened in a lazed blink. Saw him, glaring up at it, trembling with rage. Very well. A spindly hand stabbed upward into the beast's maw and drew a god's. What was that it looked like a giant sword? And maybe it really had been golden once upon a time, but it was all wrong now, wrapped in wriggling viscera. Souls. They were souls. His gorge rose. Hefting its prize, the ghastly serpent pivoted. You the abomination whirled to face him with a breathless rasp of a voice voice, like a man who'd spent too long underwater. Join the serpent king as family and so the abomination spoke, his low, rasping voice filling the chamber. Tojta, we shall devour very gods. How's about you foo look right off he drawled back. It's Rikard I want to talk to. The real Rikard. Not whatever you are. The heretical creature recoiled, still drawling its syllables. You would duh, er defy the SSSSSS serpent king. Sure would. The spear clanked down against the volcanic floor. Now die. The serpent hunter sprang to life, stronger than ever before. To his credit, Rikard blocked the first blow. Even the second, by the merest of margins. Not so the third. It smote him upside the crown of his face, tearing a great gash across his nose and taking several teeth besides. He fell like a toppled tree, stunned, and crashed to the volcanic floor. Not dead, merely dazed. It was enough. That bought us, what, maybe nine seconds make it count. Naruto dipped a hand into his pouch. Hey, ah, uh, Rani. The tiny doll stirred in his hands. He felt the weight of her attention, but she said not a word. I found your brother. He spared a glance back at the abomination, just now beginning to rise. Gonna try to save him. But if this doesn't work, if something goes wrong I just wanted to say. The words lodged in his throat. I love you. Funny, how three little words can free a man. The doll was silent for a long moment. He thought he saw the faintest smile crease her face. And then, and I, you, be safe. You'd better know a whim seized him and he grinned. And just so you know, Ren is a terrible name. She sputtered. Fool of a boy tis far too early for such talk. Love you too. Naruto stowed her protesting miniature with a fond smile. Only then did he turn and face the abomination. Oi, Rikard. Blue eyes flashed into molten gold. I want a word with you. The madman drew himself upright, forked tongue flitting between his cracked teeth. You know me. I'm Naruto Yuzumaki. He stalked toward him at a languid pace, fists swaying at his sides. Fighting things and recognizing things is what I do. And you are absolutely a thing. 
ISSSS Sha all consume the greater will itself Rikard roared, spattering him within spittle. I am fa a hair more than a thee eyeing. No, you're only a thing. A tan finger rose to condemn him. You're only an old killer, you don't make anything, you don't live, you just eat and hide, where's your dignity, where's your honor? That actually silenced the abomination. Is there a point to this, boy he rumbled at last. Art thou dictating you our obituary to me? No, it's yours. He levered the spear, its edge still singing with wind. It's time to give this world back to people who know how to build things. Headed over his shoulder now, ready to throw. You are just a killer of history. It's time for you to go. And Wuo is going to make me go the hybrid spat back. You his serpentine visage curled in derision as he gazed upon the spear in his hand. With your little stick. Probably not. Even so I have a dream. You probably did too, once upon a time. Have you forgotten do you even remember? As the abomination glowered at him, he reconsidered his course of action and lowered his arm, taking the spear with it. That's all right. From one monster to another will make you remember. His body swelled with golden light as Kurama howled to life around him, gaining size and mass. Time to give this one last go. All or nothing. We must be. Better than this. Rikard raged as he fought. Fought and. Lost. Badly. For all his blasphemous strength the former Praetor found himself. Ripped apart piece by piece in humiliating fashion. Nay, it went beyond that. He was demeaned. Debased. Fangs pierced his scales. Claws rent his hide. He fought and hacked and slashed with his blade, but was too slow. Too large. Too bursome to mount a real offense. He could no control his form as he wished. For all his strength and tenacity, the serpent was ill-suited to a fight such as this. Magma did nothing to the fox. It only laughed at his magic. Curses splashed harmlessly off its fur. And all the while, his foe said not a word. And still it took from him. His strength, his power. His sword wrestled away now as it tore him apart, root and stem. With each blow his rage burned brighter. It didn't make of sense this man's intents were no doubt also blasphemous, for he too sought to rise against the Erd tree. And yet, he did not sacrifice himself in search of strength. He was pure, whole, hearty even, his resolve untainted by power. Damn thee, you were everything I wanted to be. This was the champion Rani had chosen. This was his executioner. Fangs closed around his head, biting down. Pain engulfed him. Here in his final moments, Rikard felt something. His head was torn free from the serpent's hide and spat out, left to rot upon the chamber floor LKE so much refuse. And with it, came an emotion he'd not experienced in an age. Fear. This death this was death if this continued this fox would destroy him utterly. He would go to his grave as surely as the others. And Tanith would be a lone weight. It was Tanith who was Raya. Tanith a fair dancer from a foreign land, the love of his life. Raya his only daughter. His child. Rotten eyes bulged. R.Y.A. Memories rushed back. Rikard roared, raging with the last of his strength, thrashing in a frenzy. Deep within the belly of the beast, his great rune sparked. A serpent never dies. Rikard's remains trembled. A hand burst out of the serpent's shattered skull. Slender fingers clawed out the wound, a gray and granite hand grasped at the cavern air. A body dragged itself out after it, no, a man. Clad in damp armor of festering red and dull black, so too did he reach back, running his hands through the tangled mane of his hair. Golden orbs snapped open. In human form at last, Rikard seethed down at the man who had pushed him to the brink. Do you have any idea what you've done eyes of cold, molten gold blazed down at him from atop the serpent's carcass? All my work. All my struggles. All for naught. I cast myself away. I did not wish to return to this form it will take eons to reclaim my strength memories. Emotions. Guilt. All that he'd shunted aside for the sake of this blasphemous path, it weighed him down now, shackling him. And for what, thy fool of a... Clenched knuckles barreled into the side of his face, turning his words to a sibilant snarl. Time unfolded slowly after that. Rikard's head snapped to the side, cheek cratering, face dented inward. Reality snapped back and he dropped. Like a sack of potatoes, landing hard on his rear. A fist caught him by the collar and reeled him into another bruising roundhouse. Teeth and spittle whistled through the air. My, the ground was quite hard no. Don't focus on that stand rise he willed his body upright, glowering his fountain forth from his nose. And that gilded, golden boy glared down at him. Get up and take your lumps, you slimy shit. Rikard reached to his side and his once tainted sword flew into his grasp. Never. The blasted interloper hefted his spear in turn and lunged to meet him. Together, they collided. Something was wrong. Tanith felt it in her bones. Something was terribly, horribly awry. Then again, perhaps that wasn't quite the right turn of phrase here. To say something was such implied that it was currently happening, that there might yet be some small, minuscule chance to avert this catastrophe, to forestall the crisis currently consuming her home. Such was not the case. The mistress of the manor knew better, from the moment she'd first felt those tremors rising deep underground, nay the second she'd heard the screams, it had already been too late. For you see, her lord had met his match. And it was all her fault. She was to blame for his untimely end. T was she who'd let that wretched blonde into the manor, she who made no attempt to impede him, she who thought he falter and fail like all the rest. To her it mattered not that he served Lady Ranny, all would be fed to Lord Rikard in due time. He would devour the very gods. It had all been so perfectly planned losing her consort would have drawn Rani out of hiding. She would have come to them and then, she too, would be consumed. 
Now the walls were crumbling, the earth shaking, the sky gone dark and still no sign of her lord. Raya was nowhere to be found. Dylos had scampered off the worthless wastrel the parts unknown, and by the look of him, Patches was strongly considering the same. Only Bernal and her loyal crucible knight remained steadfast in this, but if the tremors continued unabated even their will would be tested. Honestly, she had half a mind to go down there and see what the devil was going on. A sudden clamor in the hall drew her attention. What in the world she heard Bernal's voice boomed, just out of sight. Stay back I'm warning you. Another clamor went up, the harsh ring of someone striking steel, and he fell silent. She heard it then, coming from just around the corner. The faint tap-tap-tap -tap -tap of approaching footsteps, sound of something or someone being dragged behind them. Was it Bernal's body? Perhaps had the traitor slain them as he'd slain their lord was he to parade his corpse before them. Tanith's knight tensed at her side. With a wordless hiss, she readied her blade, doubtlessly intending to lunge around the bend and strike. Peace, my friend. She laid a hand on the woman's arm. Wait for my signal. Just as well too, because in the next moment he emerged. She saw him suddenly, this Naruto fellow. He came stomping down the hall, covered and still steaming. Oh gods, the stench. She could smell him from here. He'd come straight from battle, then, and looked all the more fearsome for it. Baleful blue eyes blazed out at her from within that haggard face and Tanith decided it was just as well that she was sitting, for his gaze would have compelled such. He looked well and truly furious with them, the spear in his right hand caked by viscera. You it's true, then. She swallowed her fear and forced herself to speak. You've defeated our lord. Tanith trailed off as she beheld the figure he was dragging behind him. T was not Bernal at all, or even that of a serpent, but a man on that yet groaned with life. Her throat closed. No, it couldn't be. It was. He looked just as she remembered, every bit and change from the portrait that hung just behind her. One had but to glance between them to see the striking similarities and she could see his great rune, still smoldering faintly in the of her beloved. Which meant, here is your lord, Naruto, consort to Lady Rani, threw Lord Riker down at Tanith's feet. The demigod landed on the carpeted steps and wheezed softly. The noise reactivated Tanith. My lord Riker, she dove at him, all but throwing herself over his prone form to protect him from further harm, then back to the Y blonde. But how? You knew. It wasn't a question. Tanith looked up. Mistakes were made. The spear fed out. Tanith tensed, fearing death death that never came. Fresh air kissed her face as that honed edge tore her mask aside, exposing her face to the wanting world. He must have seen the fear in her eyes, because his own blazed a molten shade of shadow gold. The serpent hunter sang in his hands and he swung one arm back as though to strike. Her knight lunged with a yowl. The blonde backhanded her without so much as a passing glance, shattering her armor to fling her clear across the room. The woman's helmet flew free, struck the ground once, then rolled away into the gloom. It landed just shy of the perch Patches had claimed for himself. The sniveling little man took one look at it, saw the state she was in, then reached for his spear and shield. Easy now, friend let's just reset our tempers. Those blazing eyes met his. Get out. Patches got. Just like that, she was alone with her executioner. At least, she assumed he was going to kill her. Why else would he be here? I must thank you. She bowed her head low, dreading what was to come. Our lord was yet weak. You have taught us that. She tugged Rikar's slumbering head into her lap. Now he may yet regain his former might. A pause followed, and when she didn't feel the cold kiss of steel against her throat, she dared to continue. Defeat is not the end. Our lord is immortal and will one day rise again, stronger than ever before. The words that followed galled her, but without them, she knew she'd surely perish. And we would gladly pledge ourselves to your service for this selfless deed. Naruto swung his spear forward, the great serpent hunter, and planted it in the floor. With the other, he dipped a hand into his pouch and plucked forth at any doll. Nay, a familiar dollo, dear. Hello, dear Tanith. Rani's voice was colder than the moon that was her namesake. A pleasure to see thee again. Radon gazed at the moon. It seemed brighter tonight somehow, close enough for him to grasp in his hands. Even his madness he'd felt it. There had been a shift. An awakening. For better or worse, something had changed. As if a piece of it had been restored somehow, a long-lost fragment coming home. And so he strained, reaching upward with his great rotten bulk, fingers reaching, grasping. In vain. Soon. Very soon. He felt it in his rotting bones. Surely he would be released from this pain soon. She was so terribly cross with him. Rani couldn't help but see that she awaited Naruto's inevitable return. Rikard was not one to be trifled with on a good day, and still he'd gone to face him. She'd thought herself calm, resolved for what was to come. And she had been. But now that the danger was past she found anxiety seeping in. What if he'd gotten himself hurt or cursed? Her brother had ever been adept with his hexes. Indeed, the might of a demigod was not something to be trifled with. And yet Naruto had gone after him anyway. She'd not though it possible to pry him from the serpent but nevertheless the deed was done. They were siblings once, had she failed in her prior plot it would have fallen to him to face Malikith. Could they be allies after all their goal was the same, and not necessarily the means and method to reach said goal? To usurp the Ur-Tree, tear down the Great Will and lead this world into a new matter of the cost. Still, victory or no, she would have words for her consort upon his return. The headaches were getting worse. Blade could feel them creeping up on him like a shadow. They would pass, as they always did. Rani was all that mattered. 
This was nothing in the greater scheme of things. Her happiness was all that mattered. Ranny was not best pleased with him when he returned. Naruto knew at the moment he crept into her chambers. As well he should he crept into Rise and found her sitting there, waiting, glaring, credit where it was due. He met her gaze evenly and gave his report with all the due diligence of his station which is to say nothing at all. It lacked detail, but she was able to summarize it well enough. Therein lie the problem. She could see anxiety in his eyes. He was keeping something from her. And in the end, I left a bunch of clones to watch him before I came back to get you. His smile was decidedly cheeky. All's well that ends well, a Rani began to tap her foot. He winced. Oh, and you're kinda an aunt now, which makes me an uncle. Surprise. Rani's brow shot up to her hair. I beg thine pardon. Naruto told her of Raya in no short terms. Ironically, it was here that he held nothing back. He spoke most kindly of Rikard's offspring. That was it this was the secret she'd so feared she nearly laughed at herself for her own foolishness. Of course he wouldn't keep secrets from her. Only a fool would so such. It wasn't like her to jump at shadows. Still, to think she had a niece. Curious indeed dot dot wait. Rani sniffed. Once, twice, thrice, now. She'd striven with her sorcery to regain some of her senses in this wretched body and fail it for the most part. Still, she'd managed to recover one in his absence. He did well but what is that smell? He winced and scratched the back of his head. Well, it was a bit of a why affair. Indeed and you did not think to bathe before coming to me. No, his smile was almost sheepish. Then see to it at once. Hold on I get a hug for a job well done. Naruto stepped forward, still smelling like a grave and smiling Rani paled, but it was too late. Her consort pounced. They she squirmed in his arms. Release me at once you'll ruin my robes. Naruto did no such thing. Rather, he held tighter. Oh, very well regardless, this world will be better off without recusants preying upon it. She said at last. In any case, it matters not. Once the Age of Stars has begun, this world will be left to its own devices, and they shall have no need to fear red phantoms any longer. Naruto's face closed down as he drew away. What? Blasted fire and damnation blight her tainted tongue. Rani cursed herself for the slip. Forgive me, I had not yet revealed this part of mine plan to thee. Dread dawned in his eyes. Wait, you're leaving. That is my intent, yes. When? Not now, but at the end of mine journey, once Marika is dealt with. You can't just take her power and leave he latched onto her shoulders, forcing her to be still. What'll happen to this world if you do? She raised her head beneath her hat to regard him. It will fare well enough. We need not worry. He growled at her. And what if another one of those outer gods come? She hesitated. They shan't. Are you sure? Rani huffed and reached for him. Now doth protest too much? No, he batted her hand away with a hiss. You protest too little think if you just take that power and leave everyone in the world to fall apart like this for your own selfish gains you'll be no better than Kaguya. His words sent a lance of bitter ice through Rani's heart. She knew that name well. How could she not Naruto had spoken long and at length of his past to her, both of his deeds and the enemies he'd faced. The rabbit goddess was by far the worst of the lot. For him to compare her to that which it stung her more than any blow ever could. With it came anger. Hot and heady, full of fury. It burned in the pit of her soul, fiercer than the frenzied flame itself. Oh, how it burned. Do not compare me to that parasite. His eyes widened, just a little. She bit her tongue. Rani vacillated for a moment, swallowed once, choked down the smoldering ashes of her ire, and fixed him with a stern look. Naruto glared right back. He was prepared to fight her on this she realized. Even now his body burned from within, wisps of golden light stemmed from his shoulders, ready to be unleashed into dazzling, blinding brilliance at the slightest provocation. If it came to a fight, she would lose. Nay, more than that, she did not wish to fight him in the first place. Did his words have some merit perhaps she didn't want to dwell on them, but linger they did. What would happen to the lands between if she left should another outer god come, they might well find themselves worse off. If the Lady of Rot resurrected, or the formless mother found a proper foothold, or worse, the Lord of Dragons returned. And if she stayed what then to rule over America's subjects hadn't even considered such. To be a tyrant is not mine intent. She said at length. I do this for the good of all. Yeah, Naruto crossed both arms before his. Could have fooled me. Silence reigned between them. I would not have us fight over this. I don't want to fight with you either. Let's drop it for now, all right. His face softened and hers with it. Each released a quick breath of relief. They'd been mere inches away from saying things both of them might come to regret. Rani took the opportunity to steer the conversation to safer waters. Someday they might rant and rail at one another over this, but not this day, not if she would help it. Speaking of discarding things, she said, apropos of nothing, couldst thou truly craft me a body? Truth be told, she was tempted. Oh, was she tempted? Terribly, sorely, greatly tempted. Her suggestion was worth it, if only for the look Naruto wore. Ah served him right. Shu was on the other foot now. Then he smiled, and the tables turned anew. Well, that depends on you. Flesh was fleeting. Flesh was so very weak. Flesh was something Rani craved right now. Foolishness she chided herself for such thoughts was soon as they entered her mind. The time was not yet right. She knew that. To falter now, so close to her goal, would bring her naught but misery. She must remain strong for yet a little while longer. Still, it didn't stop her mind from wandering, and wander it did. Idly she turned one hand overhead, watching the light of the stars dance across her pale blue palm as she lay sprawled in her bed. 
She could see the fractures between her fingers plain as day. This fragile body yet held, but the cracks had begun to show in her body as much as her spirit. This form was not well suited to movement, let alone battle, but she taxed it regardless. Truly, she had no one but herself to blame for her decline. It wasn't his fault, Boothers. She couldn't remain like this much longer. The thought pained her, terrified her. With a huff, she flung her head back against the pillows. How strange it was to lay in a bed again. She could not feel the mattress beneath her any more than she could the starlight on her false face through the window, nor the wind in her hair, but nevertheless, she enjoyed the chance to stretch, for lack of a better of a word. Better than sitting atop her chair and the great stack of books atop it. Lazing about like this gave her the chance to think and consider her options. For an age she had been content with this puppet body. Not happy, not necessarily satisfied, but content. It served her purposes well enough, kept her focused on more important matters. Devoid of the distractions that came with flesh, she had been able to plot against the two fingers with single-minded fervor. And then he'd come crashing into her life. Naruto, that sweet, silly boy who just couldn't let her be. He'd ruined her, tugged her out of her shell until she could no longer fathom the idea of returning to her former self. It was just like something out of one of her old childhood storebukes. The hero slays the dragon, meets the princess in her tower, and sallies forth on a quest to win her heart. His trials and tribulations are many. He finds himself tested at every turn. But eventually he succeeds and returns to her. She welcomes him home, he sweeps her onto the back of his noble steed, and together, they ride off into the sunset. Huzzah, 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 and all that. Ha, ah, said she she was no mere maiden to be carried off and there was still much to do. Rani grappled with the idea a moment longer before shoving it away. She had never been the sort to cry when frustrated. As a child she had seldom shed tears. She was who she was. Not even her first death she hadn't shed a single tear. She did not cry. She got even. When she did take back her body, Rani resolved herself to savor it. But she could not. Not yet. With a long-suffering sigh, she sat up, considering her surroundings. If having a bed again was strange, returning to her old room was stranger still. In the wake of Rikard's defeat followed by his subsequent capture air forces had retreated to the academy for safety, in preparation of reprisal from his remaining rebellious recusants. Renalamother was delighted to put them up even when faced with the imminent risk of invasion. Together, they'd spent the better part of three days preparing for a siege while she recovered. She'd feared the worst, that she would wake to an attack, or an ambush at the very least. It never came. Rani could guess why, in hindsight, it seemed painfully obvious. Naruto and Rikard must have sought out the stragglers themselves while she was resting. Doubtless they'd converted those they could and eradicated the rest. Tanith likely knew their hideaways. Whatever the case, they'd had three days of peace, of silence, of rest. She grabbed a pillow and hurled it against the wall. All this rest was driving her mad. If even she had begun to get antsy, then Naruto must be losing his mind. The thought drew a grim smile to her face. Even now her consort was ever eager to rush off to the next adventure, to save everyone and everyone he could. Rarely did he consider his own well-being. Truly, it was a miracle he'd stayed put for three days at all. And yet for all that, he hadn't run off to Caleb without her perhaps there was some hope for her yet. A faint knock resounded against her door. You all right in there. Speak of the fox and he shall appear she raised herself up with a small smile. I am. Come in. He slipped in and closed the door behind him. Sorry I'm late. He grinned, whiskered cheeks dimpling in a small smile. This place is a damn maze. Her open eye raked over him, noting the distinct lack of armor, the towel deedy round his shoulder and his wet hair. He must have come straight from the baths. As she looked on he whipped his head back and forth as he entered, flinging his blonde locks to and fro. Her heart skipped a beat. This thighs was new. She'd grown used to seeing him with his hair up to have it down so it must have come fresh from a bath. He'd even changed his outfit for once, opting for a navy tunic and a pair of black breeches with matching boots. Made him look downright handsome a bad brain. With a cherry grin, he sat beside her on the bed. Rani felt herself stiffen. Things had been said between them back in the volcano manor. Words that could not be refuted. She'd thought he might die against Reichard. So had he. But he hadn't now, had he? She couldn't find the words. For once, her tongue remained tied. Mercifully, he saved her from making a fool of herself. I want to go after Radon. She blew out a sigh. Aha, there he went again. We shall seek Radon later. Naruto pursed his lips. He's a danger to people. She scoffed. Only those fools who traipse out into Kaled. Must you insist on this sure enough he lifted his chin a little, and it was then that she knew, one way or another, he was going to be stubborn. She reached out and touched a hand to his face. I do wish you'd rest a bit longer. I did rest. He squinted at her, not quite comprehending her intent. Him fine. Was he was he really he'd healed rather nicely, but Rikard's hexes were not so easily ignored. He'd bear scars on his arms from the rest of his days. Oddly enough, she didn't mind them. The marks gave him character. Each battle had marked him in its own way. For so long now they'd bounced from one conflict to the next. First that mess with Dariwell, then Mother, followed by Rikard, and now he wanted to rouse Radon. Would it ever end would they ever run out of enemies to fight? She stared at him overlong and for once, he surprised her. Well, I guess there isn't that much of a hurry for the time being. 
Naruto reached up to cup her hand with his. We can deal with Godwin and Melenia, then raid Egan, once we find them, but we at least know where Radon is. When you leave, she hopped down off her bed. I will accompany you. Naruto opened his mouth to protest. Rani glared at him, chin lifting in mulish defiance. Do you think me so weak? He sputtered at her. Of course not. She pressed her advantage, planting one hand upon her hips. Do you think I cannot fend for myself? No, no he sounded almost mulish about it. You can definitely kick some serious ass with your spells. It's just, he looked away, scratching the back of his head. I just don't want to see you get hurt. Ugh. Rani's heart betrayed her and did a silly little squeal in her. She dipped her head and tugged her hat to hide both her face in the most ungraceful expression she now wore. Damn him and his words. If she had a proper body, her face would have been a most striking shade of scarlet. Um well she sputtered for a moment, hastily mastering herself. You needn't worry about M, nor mother for that mater. She's busying herself babying Raya. The world will go on without us for a while yet. Speaking of without, his brow furrowed. Ah, and now they came to the meat of another matter, you've seen Selavis around lately. I have not. T was true, her sorcerer had been hiding as of late. His absence does not concern me. Really he frowned. Because it bothers me an awful lot. She drew him down into her arms before another argument could erupt. It feltness. Even if she couldn't feel his flesh, she could still experience a vague sense of pressure and with it, ease in her heart. Comfort even. A steady rock in the storm of her heart. Would that she could hold him forever. But she couldn't. There were matters to which she must attend. Go, then. She nudged him off. Find Blade and seek him out. He has been restless as of late. Perhaps the two of you can ascertain what he hath been up to. Fine, fine he made to stand and her heart hitched. See you later. Wait. He did, bless him. Earlier, she reached up touched his face again, this time cupping it with two of her four hands. What you said to me, before you faced Reichert. His whiskered face turned a lovely shade of red. What about it? Oh gods, her face was burning. Didst thou speak truly? His eyes flashed in understanding. Renny, I would have thee prove thy intent once more. The moment her emotion seized her and she tugged his face to down to hers. His lips touched hers as she tilted her head in response, seeking a better angle. She couldn't feel that, either. Only the faintest sensation of pressure. For all that her spirit soared, she couldn't feel him. Blast. In a fit of pique she sought to kiss him again her rewarded was only numbness. When made a pleased noise, it only made her angrier. T was not fair. He could feel this, all of this, but she could not. Unfair. Her remaining arms threw themselves round his neck, she used them to drag herself into his lap. Seconds passed, dragging onto into a minute until finally, she had to let him breathe. Pulling away only made it so much worse, because she could see the fire in his eyes, the emotions she'd stirred in him. She squirmed under his gaze in silent need. She nearly demanded he fulfill his promise then and there, that craft her a new body. Her ring was only a few floors away, secure and under her mother's watchful eye. All her fears might be for naught. The two fingers were powerful to be sure, but her new body would be supreme, almighty, able to feel all this and more, to consummate every sensation she craved. But if they could still control her, with a wicked effort of will, she reeled herself back in. Curse the two fingers. She would have to wait a while longer. Do not think that I am some wanton woman restraining herself. She hopped off his lap and shoved him away with a huff, hoping hide her stammer. You will have to earn more. He walked backwards, wearing a cheeky grin. Whatever you say, your highness. Her face flushed and she flung a pillow at him. Naruto. He ducked and darted down the hall with a cackle. He found Blade lurking near the elevator to Renala's chambers. Perhaps that wasn't the right word. Blade wasn't exactly lurking per se. Rani's shadow didn't make any effort to hide himself from prying eyes. As such, Naruto heard the half-wolf long before he saw him. He could see him down there in the plaza Moongram usually occupied, greatsword cutting vast icy swats through the mists as he raged against an unseen opponent. He could hear him snarling from here. Rani's pet wolves and he was so glad she hadn't left them to starve back at her rise lay sprawled near the steps, basking under the moonlight. They seemed happier here at the academy at any rate. As luck would have it, the largest of the trio perked up at his approach. It raised its head and bounded his way, tongue lolling out its mouth. He knelt to pet the beast. Arwa, who's a good boy. The lead wolf whined and nosed his hand. Its head turned toward Blade's distant figure with intent. Yeah, I know. He gave its ears a final scratch and rose. He'll go check on him. The hound at his palm paced back to its fellows, circled once, and laid down, intent to watch. No pressure. Blade didn't even seem to register his presence as he approached. He was muttering to himself as he drew nearer. No, it's fine. His comrade in arms snarled and drove himself through another flurry of slashes faster than the naked eye could see. Rani needs me. She needs us. He shook his head and swiped at some invisible foe once more. I am me. No one else stopped whispering. That's a red flag if I've ever seen one. Right, getting more than a little worried now. He dared to step out of cover. You all right there, Blade? The warrior rounded on him with a howl, teeth gun sharp and eyes glowing red. Steel flashed toward his face. For a wild moment he felt his emotions, furious and feral, and so full of pain. Then the steel was upon him and he had no time for further thought. He intercepted the blade with an open palm, shunted it down, stepped in, and drove a heel palm into Blade's chin. Still grasping the blade he lowered his stance and charged with his shoulder, barging the braying wolf into a wall. 
Oi, he snarled at him, holding him there now when he began to thrash. Friendly, friendly. The half-wolf heard his words at last, blinked, and gave himself a mighty shake. Sorry, mate. You startled me. I tend to do that. He released both sword and owner alike, letting them fall to the ground. You all right? Just a headache. The half-wolf waved him away. I'll be fine. Not if you're lashing out blindly like this. His brow furrowed. It's nothing. A slip. Won't happen again. Ranny would be heartbroken if I left something happen to you. I am aware. Heartbroken? Yeah, right. She wouldn't cry. She'd smack him. Come to think of it, if Blade wouldn't listen, maybe it was time time to channel a bit of Ranny. Sit. Blade dropped down onto his hindquarters without thinking. He righted himself to tower over him T-Rice as quickly, but the distraction worked for what it was and broke the tensions. Look, he glowered up at him, I don't know what's wrong with you, but you're clearly stressed. Let me help. What did he do when he was restless another prank sounded all well and good, but Ranny would be meeting Rikard soon. He didn't want to trouble Renala or Raya, either. An idea dawned. Want to spar? Blade balked back. I don't think that's wise. Come on, it'll be fun. He beckoned. I won't even fight back. Try to smack me around a bit. The door to her chambers creaked open anew. Ranny raised her gaze, wholly at ease once more. Are you well, dear brother? Rikard entered, grunted, and looked away. Come now, she couldn't help but chide him for it. Do not be cross. You live, do you not? Thine consort nearly hit my head. He plonked down in the empty chair beside her bed. Was that on your order, sister? No, no. She hid a smile behind one hand. I can no more command him than I can demand the sun rise and set. You live by his mercy. Even so, he glowered golden daggers at her. Are you goal still the same as words had her lips pursing in a thin blue line? To defy the greater will. But of course, a small smile fractured his stonegry face. Then we remained united still. A curious choice of words. She quirked a dark brow at him. Even after all you have done. Rikard looked away in quiet shame, stewing under her stare. You need to remind me. My reach exceeded my grasp. Needn't say it a flash of anger burned through Ranny's cold, cold heart. As if such a thing would undo all he had done. All he had tried to do. Had he succeeded and devoured Naruto as was his original intent they would not be having this conversation. No doubt he would have turned his serpentine gaze to her as well in due time. He may well have succeeded in his aims were it not for her consort. And he only now admitted his folly that his reach had exceeded his grasp. Indeed it did she retorted hotly. To feed yourself to a serpent of all things what were you thinking? That I could consume it he snapped back. I had intended to take its power and add it to my own. She tilted her head. At what cost you've done horrid things, crimes that make mine own pale in comparison. To say nothing of your own. What if it is gaze went slitted, a hallmark of his old form? Raya may be of my, but she is blameless in this. An admirable attempt, but she wasn't about to let that slide. And as Tanith, he flinched. Tanith has promised to atone for her crimes. As she now I suppose death would suffice. Rikard surged up out of his chair. She left him on the proverbial hook for a minute more. And then, calm yourself. I speak in jest. But you, you will see mother and make amends for the heartbreak you have caused her. Her sibling squirmed. Must I? Of course you must. She zapped his leg with a jolt of cold magic, causing her bearded brother to slam back into his seat. She's been worried sick too late. She realized he was balking at her and struggled to comport herself. You will also help us face Radon. Such will be your penance. His brow furrowed. If I must. She scowled. Yes, you must. After nearly killing that which is mine it is the last you can. Clanged. Both siblings started. What the devil was that noise? Naruto hurtled past the window with a peal of raucous laughter. Rani palmed her face and sighed aloud. Truly, that boy will be the death of me. Okay, sadly the chapter is over. And if you enjoyed just leave a like. And subscribe with post notification. So when the next chapter is ready, you will be notified. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye.